Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to this Face It Collegiate uh, event here. Uh, my name is Bax with me as Whoopsie. Whoopsie, how you doing today, brother? You might be muted. I think he's muted. <laughs> oh, I, I guess I was muted. No, dude, you're great. No, that's a good start. That's a good start. That's like the the close one. I'm I'm typing close one into the chat right now, just so you know for that close one. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, you asked how I was doing, Bax. I'm doing great. You know, I'm excited to see some Rocket League action, especially here at the collegiate level. I'm not really too familiar with the collegiate level, so I'm excited to see some yeah. new faces in the scene that I've never seen before. Typically, I float around the bubble scene in Rocket League, so, you know, mm -hmm. collegiate's pretty new to me. Uh, we have Arizona versus Tigris UNL. That's going to be uh, our first match we're going to have on stream for you. Worth noting, nudging um, is on Arizona. And they actually have a pretty, like, a pretty decent rap sheet here. It looks like they've been playing a lot of the collegiate events. They have uh, KCP Underground, Summer Series, uh, the Nexus Sports 2v2. Um, and this is all through 2021. So pl started playing, it looks like, in 2020. But a talented player. Uh, we should be seeing a pretty high-level play between these uh between these teams, like you said, you know, collegiate level um, usually brings out uh, kind of an interesting thing when you have to be attending the school you're representing. So you have that yep. maybe one or two players, right, who are up there and then they got to go out and say, hey, we need some more people. Who else plays Rocket League and is good at the game? Like, let's find you. Yeah, the interesting structure about this face, you know, tournament was the fact that you essentially had to have everybody be at the same school registered under that university or college uh, that, you know, plays Rocket League. So, I mean, we're going to have some pretty interesting matchups because not every university or college has that esports program established yet. You know, this might be the breakthrough that they kind of need or the, the proof that they kind of need to take to their athletic director or whatever it may be to right. be like, hey, we want to establish this program here for us. And, you know, face it kind of did a, a good thing here by saying you guys all have to be a part of the same university because I know a ton of, you know, collegiate right. players that, you know, a couple, couple from Canada who would probably pair with some NA people here in the States uh, and vice versa, you know, so it, it's really, really good. But uh, face it did here and then offering a good cash prize as well, a $4,000 payout. Uh, yeah. Of course, the payout being 2000 to first place, second place having a thousand, third and fourth place splitting $500 too back. So that's pretty good money for college kids. It's not, I mean, yeah, nothing to shake a stick at. That's for sure. Especially for, you know, <laughs> playing a video game, you really like playing, getting good at it, and then putting a team together and trying to fight against some other teams. Uh, the the interesting thing, like you kind of pointed that out, when you have like college teams, you'll have, you know, usually those programs right now, they're becoming much more widespread, right? You have college oh, yeah. teams for just about every single uh, major esport that exists. And as those continue to grow, you know, I expect to see colleges start to get much more on board with sanctioning esports as an actual event, especially especially considering what are a majority of students do when they go back to their dorm room besides, you know, well, we don't need to go down the list, but video games, right? Like so many of them, especially like I remember going to a whole bunch of frat parties and besides the fact there was drinking everywhere. I mean, there's like one or two rooms where it's just everybody's crammed in playing Smash Brothers, uh, Halo, playing whatever, yeah. and games are becoming more and more popular. So I think we're definitely going to see colleges start to get more sanctions in uh, for their sports, starting to say, hey, let's get this sponsored. Let's get this out there. It's a representation of us and we can actually win. We can be good at that. Yeah, I, I know for a fact when I was in college, I was that dorm room. I was that person, yeah, not necessarily yeah. at the parties, but people would come to my dorm room because I had a double uh, pretty much by myself. I paid for an extra space in my room because I'm a big guy, Bax. You know what I mean? Let's I like my space. Yeah, sure. put, both, yeah. put both the twin. I took the bunk beds apart, put both the twins together. You know, everybody came here and they, they came into my room and they all sat there and watched me play. I'm going to date myself a little bit here, Bax. Hey, Modern Warfare okay. 2 for, for Call of Duty, uh, Xbox 360, dude. So, I mean, okay. that's what okay. we used to do yeah, back when okay. I was in college, you know? No, I feel you. <laughs> so, holy. I mean, that's like, I did, I did Call of Duty, uh, I did Call of Duty 4. I think if that was because oh. wasn't that I mean, the that one was that, my game I that I mean that was the big one that was the one that went like eat full esport everybody got into it like that got very competitive I mean I've seen a bunch of montages on there that's the only one I played that's the only one I played of the series actually I mean, so Call of Duty 4 was like my cream of the crop. I, I really, and this is just my opinion. Once again, those of you guys want to roast me, it's at Whoopshoe Gaming at Twitter, okay? <laughs> Call of Duty 4 was the best and one in the my plug, personal dude, opinion. <laughs> that, exe that execution, that was good. That was good execution. Well done. I mean, it says it, it, says it oh. down there in the caster cams, too, though. So, I mean, yeah, what do you want us to do? Just attention to it, man. Just That was smooth. <laughs> that was crispy. Mm. Yeah, but my personal opinion, the, the Call, Call of Duty 4, that was my favorite one. It got me into the Call of Duty franchise. You know, it, it came out... In my personal opinion, it had the most balanced class, the balanced guns, the weapons, you know, the standard three lanes and stuff like that. That's where Call of Duty originated for me. So when Modern Warfare 2 came out, it was good. But in my personal opinion, from a comp competitive standpoint, because I used to play Call of Duty competitively for a little bit, 
Okay. Uh, it just wasn't as good as Call of Duty 4, in my personal opinion. Sure. But yep. we're not here for Call of Duty, Bex. We're here for Rocket League. <laughs> we are here for Rocket League. It's true. Hey, uh, so so just look at some stuff about the players here. So uh, so once again, Arizona versus Tigris UANL is going to be our first um, competition. Tigris UN UANL is actually a team from uh, a Mexican team. They're actually off uh, based off of the professional uh, football club in Mexico. Uh, have found Legendary. They're actually a Mexican uh, broadcaster and caster. So that's actually oh. really exciting. Uh, also, a a coach and a player. So they're going to be, uh, they're going to be playing in this tournament. They have a lot. I mean, a lot of weeklies. Uh, their team got first in the Rocket Street B tier uh, competition wow. uh, at last October. So I mean, they are you know, no slouches. That's for sure. I mean, we have we have some really good. We have some good players in this lobby. Like this is going to be pretty fun. I think they actually are um joining now we actually have all the players in the lot Ooh, we are we have rocket league whoops you we have some rocket oh, yeah. league to cast and we're about to see exactly what these players are capable of uh, i'm excited because I, I wasn't really too, too sure what to expect here as far as competition level goes you know mm -hmm. typically at the college level they're not at that uh rlcs level as far as like skill sets go but you're sure. talking these guys up right now i'm totally 120 percent on board with this especially yeah. seeing you know you said they're uh predominantly from mexico so that's going to be really awesome to kind of see right. too because typically when you think na at least for me i think more or less you know here in the states or even just canada so i mean to see like a, a straight True. mexican team right here that's gonna be awesome to kind of see them represent that I mean, and that is, I mean, the larger representation, right? Because we do work off of that. When we think of the NA region, we think of the NA teams, most of them, you know, working through, we just had regional three, you know, not too long ago. We're having more competition right now to go to that winter land in Los Angeles, which um, I won't be there. You going? Yeah, I'll be there. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, go find them. Go find them out I'm gonna there. Some, I'm going to try around. some in and out. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do for my time. I'm oh, try some in and dude. Out. You oh, no. It's up. <laughs> okay, I mean, I've, I've had it, so good for you. Just uh, get it animal style. That's all I'm saying. Um, otherwise, right. like, the, it's it's really exciting to see, you know, all these uh, all these teams kind of, like, putting, putting together the effort. It's fun to remember that NA does represent a much larger group. We're used to seeing – all the yeah. specific teams that we that we think about, but hey, Mexico is in A, and they have a lot of very talented players. So we're gonna uh, hopefully see that example right here. Uh, Tigris UANL is uh, ready to go. We're gonna be joining now, ladies and gentlemen. We are going into the lobby here. The three teams for or the three members for Arizona: Nudging, Stick, and Tater Tot. And for Tigris UANL, it's Chapa, Liasa, and Legendary. You can see there the RLCS analyst tag on the bottom. I was mentioning that early. Let's see what happens. Whoops, you in this 3v3. Yeah, that's awesome that, you know, Legendary is actually here. Like you talked about, he is a caster. This one's going to be off the back wall early from nudging. It's a little bit of possession going early for Tigris uh, in their favor. But, yeah, that's what's really, really cool to see, like, another caster here is representing Bex. Back out to center. Shot opportunity down to the bottom side. The accuracy was there, but not quite accurate enough. 440 on the clock, just getting started. Everybody kind of, it looks like, just kind of waiting, trying to... Uh, Kind of play this out. See, what is the other team going to be doing? You got to get your feelers going, especially at the start of a tournament. Liasa, out to the left. Legendaries underneath. They're going to cut this one, and that will be a great touch from Tater Tot to stop the pressure. Orange team looking to mount some kind of offense, but the defense a little too strong. Tater Tot's going to be floating. Two cars going to be going by, and finally clearing the zone. Good job of rotation so far early. You see both teams just kind of battling it out for field position. A couple of shots coming through here and there, but nothing really threatening enough because the defense is just there to answer in return. So to start this one off really, really early, Tigris is doing a very good job and keeping possession as well. Oh, a nice opportunity there. Tater Jot does get the save. Nudging out to the right side. They're going to take this one up through. That's a nice block, and that's going to drop down in front of the goal. And it will be legendary getting the touch. A good play from them. Look at Stick. Coy as you like. Gets the touch over yeah. one. There's only one more. The chip over the top, and it is touched away. Great play from the blue team to try to put some pressure on. And getting creative as well. Patience here from the blue team so far. It looks like they're willing to play a slow, methodical game. It's going to be up to the orange team to clear this zone and get to their side for their own offense. Now, Arizona was doing a great job keeping that pressure on this Tigris team. At least for a brief moment, you know, Tigris kind of answering back right now. Stick is going to advance this one upfield to Tater Top, but look at the pressure that's being mounted and the rotation issues coming out early for Tigris as well as this one almost sneaks its way through but nudging gonna have a little fight right there with the goal poles so I mean Arizona's doing the right thing right now just kind of trying to relief and get this ball off of their side of the field it's gonna be a tough one though because I think Tigris you know they overall look like one of those solid teams that's gonna keep that relentless pressure 
on this Arizona squad. Well, Jabba just had a point blank shot one on one and hit it right to the keeper. They probably want that one back. Double tap shot. There it is. Najee's going to start us off right. Arizona's up by one. And this is just a close one right here, too, because, you know, you have uh, Lisa in the net pretty much there to stop that ball from going through but just a little bit of miscommunication with, with the car control being right there on the goal line so unfortunate situation right there for Ty Grace but they're going to be down by one with only 240 seconds left Legendary on the cut back over to the right side Tater Tot's going to take this one up looking for a second goal goes for the bump and it's a great play they're up the wall there trying to get this one back towards Sarah. that's going to be nudging with the pass play towards the front oh it's going to be missed by Stick Tater Tot tries to get the touch to put it on target. Surprised to not see a 2-0 scoreline after that onslaught right now. Orange team struggling a little bit. You can see all three players are way back in their defensive zone. Boost steals have been coming through here. Resource management, always important in Rocket League. It's not talked about enough. That's a shot on target. Great save near posts from Liasa. Now they're going to get by with one, with boost to the right. And legendary to take over. Nudging is up. Tater Todd is up. The touch is there. The faster team right now is this orange squad. There's the pass play. Oh, so close to give and go. Still a one goal lead. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. The Tigers just look like such a faster team. and look like they're going to be pretty much, you know, forcing so much on the Arizona side of the field, on the blue half of the field here. But they're just not doing much with the possessions that they have in front of them. Like I said beforehand, unfortunately, Arizona is going to go ahead and go on the board first, 1-0. to zero, But I really feel like in the home stretch, in this best of five series, that this Tigers team is going to wake up and start to figure out what to do with this ball and put them in the better position to win. Out to the left, the carry here from Chapa. It's one touch. They, they're, they're kind of giving over possession here, it looks like. Orange team does have some opportunities. They've been able to put the ball into dangerous spots, but they haven't been able to take any quality shots that are really going to challenge the defense here of Arizona. They've come with some saves, but I don't think any of the shots have been all that threatening, especially when they've had the opportunities to put some shots on target. That's going to be a great oh. cut stick. Off to the right side, 2-0. This is a great shot right here from Stick. Tater Tot hunting that demolition down. Stick with the follow-up touch, just putting himself you know, with the follow through shot, nobody home just because of that demolition from Tater Tot. So heads up play right there for Arizona. Physical play is something that's being discussed a lot in Rocket League right now. A lot of the professional teams, bubble teams, lead teams, college teams, you name it, bumps are in play. They weren't, they were something that were considered a little bit toxic. Some people still certainly have that mindset, but now oh, yeah. it's been realized as the meta. It's been understood as physical play is a way to take people out of the rotation of the game. That's no different here we do see the second goal coming to fruition from that and nudging to carry out of the zone look for goal number three yeah you talked about that rocket league pros you know are kind of adapting to that play style as well because they're starting to realize how much demolitions can really open up the offense and the defense uh, when pretty much demos are on the field it takes away that defensive member or the offensive member essentially for like about five seconds on the field but at about 15 seconds remaining right now arizona up comfortably with two by two i should say my apologies 10 seconds now, here comes Chapa on the right-hand side, gonna try to beat Nudging through. Does temporarily do that, but Nudging still sticking with it, winning that 50-50 battle. Chapa trying to take one for the road. Can't quite come up with this one to center it, but that right there is gonna kill it, and Arizona is gonna win this one two to zero and take game number one. Seemed convincing, uh, to be honest as well. Uh, nudging Tater Tot and Stick did seem to be the more aggressive team, although, you know, the score lines don't show too much of a, um, of an overwhelming uh, favorite, although nudging certainly did uh, pretty well as far as that's concerned. So five shots, two saves. They do get the one goal, 400 points in the lobby. But uh, I do think Tigris was, uh, you know, they were definitely, they were definitely in the mix, right? They were definitely fighting yeah. for it, but they just, I don't feel like they had the same offensive presence as Arizona. I mean, I, I disagree with you on that one uh, because mm -hmm. of the fact that I feel like Tigris does, they do have the offensive presence. They're just not executing very well. So, I mean, I, I really feel like they're the faster team. They look like the faster team, the better team, but Arizona is definitely playing a lot better and as far as playing together as a team. But sometimes that's what happens in Rocket League. It might take you a game or two, whether it be nerves, you know, because we are playing from some pretty big bucks here. Uh, so it could be nerves. It could be, uh, you know, just... Uh, Figuring out what the defense is kind of giving you, figuring out what the offense is kind of giving you, and it just needs to open up just a tad bit. So I want to chalk this one up to nerves just a, just a little bit, but I'm not taking anything away from this Arizona mm. defense.
Mm, that that's a that's a strong point. Uh, I do they they did have the opportunity. I do think that uh, specifically, I think Joppa was the one who had that point blank shot. It really was an opportunity to get some get something on the board and try to start fighting back and get some momentum going in their favor. But it just didn't come through. They they hit it directly into the keeper, like dead center bullseye on the target with one person yeah. kind of wheeling backwards. That's the kind of thing where you're right. Maybe we can apply that to nerves. Maybe we can apply that to something else. It, it, I don't really know, you know, what else, you know, you could really like take to that, whether it's practice or, or you know, uh, just nerves, like you already said. Uh, but you're right. Tigers has their offensive chances. Let's see if they can uh, maybe apply that in this, uh, in this next game. Yeah, they definitely need to be clicking on all cylinders to get by this Arizona team, especially the defense. Like I said, I'm not trying to take anything away from them. They played phenomenal. They were covering up those shots. But there was just a few moments where Tigers kind of had an open net opportunity, and they just shot it a little bit too wide. So I think you right. might have touched on it just a little bit, but the accuracy issues maybe for Tigers early on. But the opportunities are there. So, I mean, they just need to keep the same aggression keep the same pacing as well and just pretty much start to try to open some things up whether it be the demolitions that we talked about uh you know during the game start demoing some of the defenders back because that's going to open up the net even more and kind of start to starve some people of boost as well as just you know put somebody in an awkward position that maybe spawns in and touches a ball and then you're kind of there and you, you start to kind of roll with it so i mean right. tigers need to figure it out just a little bit but you know arizona winning that first one Looked like a really, really solid team as well. So I'm not trying to take anything away from them. I just feel like Tigres just look right now like a better squad than what we saw in this game number one. Right. Uh, and that and, you know, Arizona does have, like I said, nudging has been uh, nudging with love, I think, is their official name that they're signed up under their tournament with. But nudging is actually somebody who has been around the circuit. Yeah. They have been playing uh, in these uh, in a lot of different events, been playing the weeklies, playing the monthlies, and they show up. They show up. They do quite well. On the other side, we were mentioning like legendary is there. They've been coaching, playing and broadcasting the game for at yeah. least a couple years. So also a very talented player, gonna need to see the support come through. There, This is where in collegiate, more than the professional scene, you get you get maybe a little differential in skill levels. You have people, everybody's good, everybody's competent at the game, but you do have those differences in mechanics, you have the difference in practice because you do have to be representing your school. So you can't yeah. go out and just find anybody. You gotta pick from a much more narrow pool of players. Yeah, like like most you know, Rocket League teams are kind of formed. A lot of players play six mans, is what they call it. Um, for those of you that don't know, it's pretty much just this Discord server where a lot of competitive players kind of r rank their way up through six mans, and that's where you see the rank B players, the rank B plus players. Right, right. What I'm trying to say is basically that's where a lot of these players start to find their second player, their third player, the person that they play with the best. So mm -hmm. right now it's limited. Basic kind of limited that to just your university and just your college. So you might have two people on this squad who are, let's say, SSLs or grand champs or something. And then you have to struggle to find that third person because somebody doesn't play Rocket League or most people like, you know, you're kind of introverted. So you're kind of afraid to go right. even go talk right, to right, some people exactly. or something like that. So you have to find that third person that you're probably like, oh, I know he plays, but he, maybe he's a diamond. We can still cover it up and be like a 2v and a half versus three people. You know what I mean? So right. that's what makes this interesting, I feel like, though. Yeah, uh, it's it's funny because we're talking about that, and it almost makes me feel like you could you could almost make like a low key rule that on every college campus there's an SSL in a dorm room somewhere that nobody <laughs> knows that nobody yeah. knows is there, and it's like you know can you can you hunt them down? Uh, speaking of hunting down, we're gonna be getting in, ladies and gentlemen, to the next game. We've got Arizona versus Tigris, nudging stick and tater tot versus Chapa Liasa and legendary Liasa to the right side trying to get the cut early to get some pressure on and unable to put it on target. Aggression here early on for this orange squad. And it will be out to the right here, now back to the left. That's gonna pop out center. Opportunity for Tarantot to take a shot. They're gonna put that on target right side. No, it's gonna be a little bit off. Ooh. And Machopper did get burned on the play. They're lucky to survive that one. Yeah, they were walking away. Luckily, with that one, like you like you said, Choppa just in a bad position as far as his car wise, and then Tater Tot just coming up and just pretty much trying to do everything he possibly can, not thinking that Choppa was actually just going to sit there on the goal line. So he was trying to shoot around him because he thought he was kind of going to react to that situation, but just never reacted at all. Mm. One touch. Maybe a second one. Legendary was coming up with that, and Stick actually got the defensive bump as they were moving forward. Great trajectory here from Chapa to put it on target, but no. Looking for the centering pass instead. Liasa shot. Legendary's there. Could cut. 
and they were going for it. The aggression here is definitely mounting for Tigress, and whoops you, I yep. think you were right to call me out on that because they definitely are the team with the aggression and the offense. They just need a goal. But you can't take away from this Arizona defense. As you see here, they're quickly clearing, the, clearing this one away. It's back towards the orange side of the field. And like you said, you have to watch out for nudging. He's very, very dangerous. He is well known around this bubble scene. I have seen him in a couple of tournaments I have casted, so that name does stick out to me. But this Tigris team, you have to be very, very careful if you're Arizona because they are just knocking on the door countless times and times again. And something that you would think would have to break with this Arizona defense. That was good defense from uh, Liasa. Surprise, they actually had a couple of flubs in the previous game on the defensive side or being really low on boost, unable to get there. There, they get a great read on the 1v1. Tater Tots had two of those now, where they're able to carry the ball forward and try to get a play to set up uh, their teammate, who's actually rotating in on the offensive side from behind to get a shot on target. They weren't able to make that happen twice because of Liasa's defense. Shout out to them for that good defense. Shout out here to the shot opportunity, but it won't come to fruition back center legendary stealing boost far side only one player there oh. it's a kick in the touch they had a little bit of boost and it just wasn't enough sticks huge missed opportunity right there to put arizona up first and stretching as far as he possibly can with that skyline but just could not make contact with it so you know he desperately wants to get the ball back into his hands as you see arrows roll arrows into this one right here at midfield but it's going to put a weird touch in a weird situation for the arizona defense to kind of you know, defend it, but they did a very good job at that. So Tigris, like I said, once again, just knocking on the door, but they still just cannot find the back of the net. Back to the left into defensive rotation here for Blue, looking to clear the zone, nudging finally releases. 2-0 was the score line in game number one, best of five series here. Tater Tot wants that one back. Want to put that one on target, bounce shot, no. Legendary with one touch, is there a second one? A little bit of miscommunication here, Choppa goes underneath, but the play has worked regardless. Nudging, nudging indeed. Perhaps a limit up to the name stick for one touch here to put a shot on target. Tater Todd denied. Legendary cutting across. And right now, uh, whoops you, nobody really putting shots on target. The ball spending so much time in neutral, not really going any direction. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, there's a lot of good plays being made by the defense and the offense, kind of just cutting off some of these angles in these passing lanes as well. So before anything even gets presented in front of them, they're cutting off some of these angles, like this one right here from Stick. That was just a gimme right there for Liesa that was going to pretty much probably secure that goal and put Tigris up, but just cut off. Another opportunity here for Nudging, who got a good read on the ones in open field, back out to the left, underneath for Joppa, looking for one touch. Either team trying to set up a really good offensive opportunity to get a goal into the back of the net because we are still at 0-0 in game number two of this best of five basic collegiate event. Shot here, flip reset for Tater Tot. They're going to let it fall back down to the bottom. Legendary to control, misses the touch. Choppa gets the boost though. That's a double commit from the left side and a demo to boot. Nudging with control, stick to the right. Oh, from behind, it's Legendary with the save. Liasa gets another save. The pass out to the left, and what a defensive stand for the orange team. Yeah, this is a very, very close one. You know, Nudging wants that one back as well. He had that one pretty much dead to rights, but that Tigris offense pretty much coming out at the perfect time to stop that one at the goal line. We're looking at about 30 seconds left in this game number two, and no, nobody is willing to give up anything, any inch, any ground whatsoever. We had a couple of close opportunities and close calls, but nothing really finding the back of the net just yet. But one thing I want to point out, Bax, is Tigris have yet to find the back of the net, and it's almost two games already. Mm. Well, with 10 seconds to go, Joppa, is this the opportunity to get that first goal and make it a heroic one indeed? Underneath, Legendary's gonna go right by. Nudging to send it home. The touch goes for the bump play, but no. And now on the other side, one second, overtime. Whoops, you, who has the momentum right now based on the gameplay that you've been seeing? I, I just wanna kind of, you know, say Tigris has the momentum just a tad bit, but we're gonna start off on the orange side of the field for just temporarily. Terata almost putting that one through early on. So, but Tigris, they just they just need to get that first goal. And I really feel like maybe the waterfall, the floodgates are gonna to start to open up for them offensively. Shot towards the backboard. Set aside by Stick. Back out to center, legendary. That's a shot on target, Liasa. Has to do well. Ooh, and under the pressure of the moment, they are able to stand strong. That's two saves that they have just in this final overtime here. Six saves credited to them in this game. My goodness, is there a goal to them as well? Oh. No! Denied by Tater Tot, and we're still 0-0 in game two. 
This is absolutely insane. Like, just minimal, minimal opportunities to kind of sneak some of these through. And then you just have a defender just coming up. This oh! one goes through. Tater Tot scores it. And it's a doomsie dish assist here. Nudging gets up to the ceiling. One touch, make it two. And it's just enough. They were trying to put that shot in the whole game. And it slides in off the post. What a game two. Are you kidding me? After a game one, it seemed like Arizona was in control. Game number two, a much more even affair. Can Tigris now swing the pendulum all the way to the other side and get a victory in game three? Well, yeah, so walking away with six saves in this matchup. So definitely doing the thing on defense. But two games now have passed, and Tigris have not scored a single goal in this matchup. So very, very close, close games. But mm. like I said beforehand, they're just struggling to just kind of get things in the back of the net offensively. I would, I would like to say it's, mm. they're struggling to kind of, you know, get things going on offense, but they're not because they're there on right. offense. They're just not, you know, putting things through the goal line. Right, 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 right. And I, I think I think another facet of that is what you, you, you've been mentioning, the Arizona defense being as strong as it is. I think Tigris did have a lot of aggression. They had opportunities on shots, but they aren't clicking on the same. They aren't getting the passes. They aren't getting the assists. They aren't seeing the clear. They aren't able to get that ball quickly from side to side in the same way that Arizona does. They play from defense, and Arizona gets it all the way over to the other side. The clear is there. They're clearing the zone, breathing easy, getting some shots on target. Game number three is a do-or-die affair here for this blue squad or sorry for this orange squad tigress have got to win this one to stay alive in this series otherwise they will be taken out and it's a great it start is. for arizona there it is there's nudging we talked about him last game essentially how he's in this bubble scene he does play for a couple of teams as well there he is right there on the follow-up touch off the side while tater tot was there as well but nudging's gonna get credit for this goal into diagonals we also versus stick over to the right nudging the chip one more touch that i don't know how that demo just worked i'm gonna be totally honest <laughs> legendary was the one aggressing they're the one that dies that is one of the more <laughs> strange demolition uh events that i've seen in this game this is rocket league backs welcome to it you know we, we don't we don't really ask those kind of type of questions they just kind of happen am i right but uh yeah i'm too kind of confused as to how that one happened as well but legendary is gonna be in the corner with this one trying to score first desperately for this Tigers team. They need to get on the board. Here comes Liesa, and this is what I'm talking about right there. Nudging comes out with that save, and just he read that one so perfect that be, like as soon as that shot went through, pretty much he reacted, and he was there. To the left. We also looking to put some kind of pressure on some. Uh, they're trying to turn this defense into offense. Six saves in the previous game. Devil comes through for Tater Todd. Nobody home. That's going to go right by Liasa now with control. Gets by one. Gets by two. Shots on. Nice job by Tater Todd to come through on defensive rotation. Chop it back towards center. Legendary is going to have to go back here into the defensive zone. And that's what I'm talking about with this clear from Arizona. Their defense clears the zone so quickly. And now they have to work their way all the way back across the field to get something on target and tie up this game. Let's see if Chop has got what it takes from the left side. Back the center legendary up off the backboard liasa it's your time to shine shot no not quite there Daba still has a follow-up touch though keeping this one on the blue side of the field so this is what they desperately need to do is just keep this pressure over here and you would have to think that something would have to crack eventually on this arizona defense squad or you know sometimes all you have to do is kind of float those ones towards the back or towards the goal like this one right here from nudging and they'll find the way home but still about 12 minutes of Rocket League have been passed. The Tigers have not found the back of the net yet. I think you're right that as soon as they do, it'll almost be a realization moment, an epiphany. Oh, we too can score. Let's go ahead and open up the gates. Legendary quick cut on that rotation to the right. They saw the ball going center, and they're going to make the play. A little miscommunication here from both teams, but the uh, the victor of the miscommunication, if, if there is one, is going to be this blue squad stick going to put it on target. No! Denied. Liasa, so quick now. It feels like they were getting warmed up in game one, and now they're definitely here in game number two and game number three. They need some support. They got to get something in the back of that net, or else it's all going to be for naught. I like that touch by Nudgy right there. Adam being able to kind of get that momentum back towards the orange side of the field just temporarily, but uh, just a little bit of a floater, you know, just puts the defense in an awkward position, you know, so. Good right. job by nudging. Brings this one around the left-hand side as well. The right-hand side, my apologies. It's going to be upfield to Liesa. Going to be off the side wall now. Here comes Tater Tot. Misses contact with that one, but nobody's there for the follow-up touchbacks. 
Legendary and Choppa actually both rotated backwards at the same time, and there was a lack of communication there on who was going to take that one. As a result, it's all the way to the other side. Tater Tot finishes a great pass play. Yeah, that's just the miscommunication right there. Like you just said, Choppa was just rotating back, just had to put some sort of touch on it, being the last person back for this Tiger squad. So that just opens up the door for the offense to be more aggressive and pretty much counteract that mistouch right there. So Liesa was in a good spot, but just could not get the read because it's pretty much just a guessing game right there too. Tater taught the pass, stick the turn. We'll get a touch, double commit here from the blue squad, although they're playing comfortable. They're playing comfortable Rocket League. You can see getting a little bit more loose on the rotations, but also loose on the attempts. They're looking to put some shots on target, have a little bit of fun with it back towards center. Up to again, nice save here from Choppa. That's the speed that I think we've been missing from this Tigers team this entire game. Got to get some speed, got to get to that ball first, try to cut these rotations, get aggressive, get something on target. Choppa tries to make it happen. That's going to be a great bounce pass here. Uh oh, nothing going to happen from it though. I was going to say, uh oh, that was a little bit of a mistouch right there from Tater Tot. He uh, kind of floated that one at mid, but nobody was up in the air for that one because of the fact that two members from Tiger Rays were actually up previously before that. So I don't think they just had the boost to kind of catch up to it, but Legendary finally scores one and puts Tiger Rays on the board. Now it's the moment to see. Is this when they're going to unleash? It was an open goal. Credit to Legendary for putting it in the back of the goal. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you haven't been able to score in three games. You have an open net from that angle. That is a missable shot. We've all missed that shot. So well done for them for just getting it on target. Oh. And the answer from Arizona <laughs> immediately, 3-1. Yeah, you hit the nail right on the head right there, Bax, because open nets are the hardest ones to score in Rocket League. So like you said, credit to Legendary for putting that one through. But short-lived hiatus, or a moment right there, for because Stick just answers right back, puts Arizona up by two once again with only a minute and three remaining. Into a double kickoff. It looked like a double aggression here from both uh, sides of the field and this competition, which has been favoring Arizona the entire series so far. Tigris looking for a little bit of life late in the game, and they certainly will. Oh, they're going to gonna find it. Liasa, the aggression, force of will to get number two. That's just credit to Choppa here, too, in the corner, just basically keeping this one over on the blue side of the field. Tater Tot mistakenly brings this one in front of the, or or the blue box, and that right there is exactly why you don't do that, because you never know who's there lurking with that follow-up touch. And sometimes, you know, even if you have a goalie back there on the goal line, those shots just come way too fast for that person to react. Almost that nudging with the carry to get that two-goal lead back again. Another shot. It's going to be sent aside here. Chaba gets there first. Pop up, nudging. One touch. Looking for two. They've got it. Three. Back to their teammates. Stick with one. Cross. For another touch, no. Legendary with 20 seconds. Going to need to see something legendary here. If they want to be alive in this series, they need one more goal to get to overtime. Choppa, not quite the power touch they were looking for. Tater Tot up into the air. They're going to have control over to the left side. One touch, make it two. The reset three. No, can't quite get the next one. Back over to center. Legendary. Choppa, can you cut the ball? Oh, one touch away. GG, Arizona sweeps. Yeah, unfortunate right there that, you know, uh, Legendary couldn't get that ball up, couldn't quite cut that one off to kind of put it back on the roof of his car to drive that one and give it a little bit of chance for Tiger Race to tie this one up and head to overtime. But Arizona just looks so dominant from the start of game number one, even though mm. the aggression and just the pacing was so, so different for Tiger Race that they looked like the better team. Arizona just played way better Rocket League. Right. And I think I think that it's a it's a consistency effort. And this is something that we talk about in Rocket League all the time. Every single time there's a series, doesn't matter if it's a best of three, best of five, best of seven. It's all about the length of play. It's about it's about being able to be consistent throughout the games. You might drop a game, but that's OK. As long as you come back through and regain in this one, Arizona was the more consistent team. They were able to put it together game after game, attempt after attempt, shot after shot. And the only goal that was able to be had was an open net. They really locked down on defense. I mean, going through in this tournament, you got to watch out. I think Arizona's going to have a really good shot of winning it because their defense just was impenetrable for all three games. Yeah, it's going to be definitely 
put an asterisk next to that one for sure because of the fact that, you know, Arizona, like we, we didn't know really much about any of these teams pretty much going into these matchups. So it's really, really cool to kind of see them. But Arizona, I'm making an asterisk next to them right now, known for their defense, but be careful for their <laughs> offense. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. they just played really, really good together. They just had better team chemistry. I feel like better communication as well. So if they can stick with that, they're going to be one of the better teams, like you said, Max. Um, nudging was the uh, front runner for uh, the stat lines throughout that series. Although Tater taught in that last game, six, sh uh, six shots. Like they were definitely putting on the pressure, uh, receiving the pass quite a bit um, uh, from their teammates. Nudging definitely putting a lot of pressure on stick, had a great uh, follow-up shot and goal. Actually, they got the, uh, the team hat trick, one goal a piece in that final game of the series to take the best of five. Uh, and, you know, I think I think Tigers definitely had the promise, but just wasn't able to put anything through. Do want to mention that we are going to be going into our next match. Let's get all the players in the lobby. It's going to be the Golden Gophers versus the Florida Gators. I'm familiar with the Florida Gators on the basketball court. I'm familiar with the Florida Gators on the football field. The Florida Gators on the pitch for Rocket League is going to be a different story. Look forward to seeing uh, how they're going to perform here against the Golden Gophers. Yeah, like you said. Like you said beforehand, I, I do recognize the Florida Gators for their football abilities. I mean, not really much more or less basketball because I don't really watch basketball backs, but <laughs> we'll allow it. But we'll allow say... it. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm more of a football guy. You know, what I mean, look at look uh -huh. at the background. But I will say this. Yeah, the Golden Gopher is going to come into this one. Uh, it's going to be you know, we're not too familiar with who these players are. So, right. I mean, you have to think that if you're representing Florida, that you would have to pretty much be a solid solid team though especially the university of florida that's, that's pretty insane to me i'm not even sure where the golden gophers are even from so i mean we're going to mm -hmm. look into that mm -hmm. one maybe if uh, somebody could kind of get that information to us please send it our way but I i'm really really excited to kind of see this florida gators team uh yeah what's what, what's interesting when you talk about that is player pool you're representing the bigger like you're representing your school you have to be from the school that you're representing right so yeah. the larger your student base the more player pool you have to access top level players. So the yep. larger schools you would think would do better, but that doesn't mean that the smaller schools don't have like tight knit communities and talented players. So it's, yeah. so you, you, you kind of do have that expectation, but once you're on the field, all that matters is that W. Yeah. All that matters is who shows up to play as well. Like we just seen from Tiger Ace. They showed up to play, but they just could not figure out how to score on offense. But, I mean, Golden Gophers coming in here with a huge, huge question mark ab above our head right here. But as the players load into the lobby, we're seeing three members right now loading with a supersonic legend tag, Bax. Well, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you should have <laughs> some play. You should have some gaming happening in this one. The Golden Gophers, that is Minnesota, Bismo, Chez, and Mom, season one season three SSL Florida Gators J Russ Raid and Strawberry. We got an SSL tournament winner. We got a season four SS. I mean, we got people in this lobby. Let's see what they can do when it comes to getting that ball into the back of the net. We're gonna have an early attack here from the blue squad. They're in the offensive set. Strawberry over to the right side, back towards center. Good clear and good communication from Raid up to Strawberry in the offensive side. Sheds. One touch, looking for two, on the pitch. Good cut here from Bismo. One more touch, the pass play towards center. Will be set aside by Strawberry. Team's gonna feel it out here early on. We're gonna see what comes from it. That's yeah, gonna be a pretty solid game. I feel like, I, I feel bad for kind of talking about the Golden Gophers now, so put a question mark above them. Cause yeah, if I think about it, I think football, I do recognize it from Minnesota, like you talked about beforehand. So Ray putting this one off the back wall, but no follow up touch to kind of find its way through. It's Strawberry gonna bring up the right hand side now. Gonna be cut off early though. So pretty interesting, though, to kind of see Golden Gophers just with the possession to start this one off. Or, I'm sorry, the Florida Gators. My apologies. The Strawberries to score this one and put Florida Gators up by one. And they're actually, this is an offensive rotation. They're, they were on the right side going for the pre-flip and with zero boost. They curl all the way back, grab mid-boost, and they're right back up the opposite wall. They're up onto the ceiling to go for the play. I think we're seeing a very aggressive play style. Strawberry didn't leave the offensive set for the last 30 seconds. It felt like they were just turning on that ball every single time. They get a goal from it. Let's see if there's an adjustment from the Golden Gophers. Let's see if they get their own offense going think that they have to have some sort of offense going because they were just pressured so hard into the back of their net especially coming in here with all these supersonic legends they're familiar with the game they've been playing it for a while because you don't get there by chance backs i tell you that much you get there by hard work dedication and grinding whatever that may be especially fighting three ssls that go to the same college as well is extremely rare in my personal opinion uh i mean I'm, I'm, they pr probably have an esports sort of uh, uh 
uh, team, probably over up in Minnesota. So if they're representing that, then shout out to these guys. To the right side, Jez with one touch, a lot of boost here. The reset underneath, the shot opportunity. J Russ comes through. Mom actually went for the uh, the physical play as well. A shot from Bismo goes wide. Jez back to center. J Russ out into mid, gonna turn over possession. Strawberry on the turn. Another demo comes through on the rotation, just trying to mix it up. That's a double win from Strawberry to cut this towards center. The pass play no. Nobody's gonna be able to get to that one. Ray does steal that boost in the corner. Bismo puts the shot on target. It will need to be saved. Oh, barely there. It's Strawberry on the pre-flip just to eke out that hitbox and keep this a one goal game. I wanna point out right now, Bax, that uh, apparently the president of Gator Esports is inside the chat um, and pretty much said that Jay Russ is a pro player from Manzana, a little known team in the Rocket League scene. And I say that with quotations in, in with my fingers. Mm. I, I got the imp, I got the implication of air quotes, so that uh, yeah, 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 certainly certainly made sense. Shot opportunity again. You're saved off the side. We're seeing the defense come through for the Gators. They got that early goal, and the attack has been from the Golden Gophers, putting on pressure time after time. But it is the Florida Gators holding on to that defense, and anyway, hey, one goal. That's gonna win it if they can hold on for two more minutes. You said two minutes remaining. J Russ here on the right hand side. Let's see what he's about right here. He's gonna be stuffed right there at the goal line from Bismo. Strawberry gonna try to bring this one upfield as well, but at the same time trying to keep this one on the uh, the Golden Gophers side. So intercepted up right there at midfield. Minute and 40 seconds remaining. Here comes Raid now. Passing this one off to Strawberry off the right hand side. J Russ gonna be stuffed once again by Bismo, and Bismo has just been everywhere right now on the defensive side of the field. But J Russ has a chance at this one to kind of score. Once again, it puts Florida Gators up by two, and this one's a close shot right here from Ray. Gonna be saved away by Mom. So Golden Gophers need to just start bringing this presence and get this ball off of the blue side of the field. Eight saves to the 11 shots that have been on target for the Gators. Another one required saved aside from Bismo. The defense clearly here. They gotta turn that defense into offense. Clear the zone, get through neutral, get on board and get some shots on target. There's one easy clear from J-Russ. Over the left side, Raid gets one. Off the wall, looking for a second one underneath. No, can't tuck it away. Strawberry the carry. Strawberry the left. Strawberry gets by. Oh, Chez the save. Will get there in time to get that box through and in the way of the ball. So it couldn't make its way into the back of the net. Mom's still on the competition here, looking to put some pressure on. Here is the equalizer. No, J Russ denies. Raid back to center. A nice little touch here. Strawberry over to the right. 30 seconds to go. And the blue team mounting an offense. Oh, here comes J Russ now, right? Advances this one upfield. Chess is going to pop it off to the right hand side, but J Russ is going to get the demolition. Hunting for another one as well to extend this lead. Final 20 seconds now. Here comes Bismo at midfield. J Russ. Trying to get the clear off to the right-hand side, but that was a very, very close one right there for the Gof uh, Golden Gophers. Still a chance, though. Here comes Mom on the counterattack right here to be saved away to the right-hand side. Final seconds ticking away. They have to have one last opportunity right here off the back wall. J. Russ still with it, has plenty of boost. Can he get the touch? He does. Bismo off the side wall, still up in the air, and it's dead right there in front of the blue box. And the Florida Gators hang on and take game number one, one to zero. And it what, what was what was interesting about this game specifically the Golden Gophers mom in particular three different times I saw them rotate to the defending goal line and just go for the demo or bump when a player one of their teammates had control of the ball looking to put a shot on target there was one in particular where we had Bismo with control that was actually towards the end of that game. And then mom actually went through and went for the bump. If if they they got the bump, but the shot wasn't on target. Golden Gophers yeah. clearly look they look comfortable in the offensive set. They got to get some accuracy to keep Florida Gators honest right now. Just not threatening enough. I mean, yeah, especially since this is such a tough, tough Florida Gators squad. I mean, we talked about Golden Gophers. Everybody walking in here with the supersonic legend until we had you know pretty much that. Uh, information about the florida gators and j russ and everything else so you have to think that j russ you know being a almost pro i would say semi-pro rocket league player mm. that he he would he sought out and pretty much has a fan base as well at florida so you, you think that he has to have some friends that are up there with him to play rocket league day in day out with him so florida right. gators definitely have the potential to kind of take this series in a 3-0 sweep in my personal opinion but it just comes down to how the golden gophers are going to respond to this and the fast pacedness and the heavy heavy offense that florida is providing right now 
Yeah, I mean, that is, uh, you know, looking at uh, Manzana uh, in the uh, in the last regional, they actually were uh, eliminated one in three. They did take a 3-1 win over Buccos, losing to Exet Oxygen Esports, which is, you know, no, no surprise. That is a great crack team. And the uh, the Sonics as well dropping yeah. three one. So they they de so definitely some talent here on both these teams. The pass play looking good, but nothing can come from it. All players in the lobby looking pretty sharp. Let's see one goal game in the game number one. Is game number two going to be the same affair? I would hope not. I would hope that the Golden Gophers will kind of wake up just a tad bit to try to you know establish some sort of offensive presence here, but. Starting off right where they, wherever they left off is Florida, though. They're coming strong right off the pitch. All the rotations are pretty much solid as well. So it's just an awesome thing to see. But at the same time, I really want the Golden Gophers to kind of tie this series up. Strawberry the carry. Look at the control. They try to go down for the boost. What a clever steal from uh, from Bismo, I believe, underneath to get there in time, seeing they were going to run out of boost. Clever play from both teams here. It's looking pretty sharp. I love seeing the next level plays. It's a thinking game. You might not think it, but it certainly is a mental game. Strawberry on target. Nobody home. The Gators up by one. What a pass right here from Jay Russ. Watch as he stays with this one on the right side of the wall. Just kind of makes something out of nothing. And Strawberry just waiting at midfield. Perfect place, perfect timing. The communication is very strong with this Florida squad. Into diagonal, Strawberry and Bismo. Chez, very aggressive on the kick. To the corner, out to the right side. Looking for one more touch. No, Mom's going to carry towards center. They got Bismo. Oh, that last touch. And it looked like a pinch opportunity for Bismo and Chez there. Coming across the line, looking to put one on target. And it is, yet again, the Florida Gators mounting the offense here into the zone. Looking for the pass or the cut. Strawberry couldn't cut quite fast enough. And it will be sent aside. JRS to the right, double demo comes through, 2v2, and we're back into 3v3 just like that. As the response come through, Chez out to the left, looks to cut, no, can't get it through. Neither team really getting too much possession here. It's kind of passed back and forth saying, okay, we took a shot, it's your turn. You take a shot, let's see how it goes. Oh. Right now, that's kind of fair, there it is! Four down for Chez, equalized, they're on the board. I was going to say, you have to think that something has to give right now because it's just the pressure right there for Golden Gophers. Finally, finally back of the net, courtesy of Chez, but Strawberry was right there in the goal line. But I think he had a little bit of a, uh, uh, I think that was Bismo in front of him as well, just bumping him away, kind of being a nuisance right there in front of the orange box. But tie ball game now back. And that's exactly what we want to see, especially after a 1-0 affair. Teams pretty evenly matched here, playing from defense most of the time, setting into offense, trying to get something put together. Strawberry goes right by. Oh, if Mom had won that 50, nobody was going to be home, including Mom, whether it was with spaghetti for lunch bunch or otherwise. Over to the right, <laughs> opportunity to get this one center. No, that's going to be set aside by Strawberry. One more touch, they've got it. They still have 20 boost as well, and the corner is there. They get that corner, Bismo. Great turn on the ball, but the offense is here now. Strawberry to get this towards center. No, that's going to be back to the left, Jay Russ. It's going to be right up to it, and Chez will get this cleared of the zone. It's just so quick to strike here for both of these teams, whoops you. Yeah, it looks like to me like Strawberry and Jay Russ are just in free play mode and like with each other, you know, then Ray just kind of comes through whenever he's needed. I'm, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from his play style or, or his mm. gameplay in general. I'm, I'm just saying that right now, it looks like the Strawberry and J Rush show, then Raid is just kind of lurking, just waiting for his opportunity to strike like he puts that one off the back wall right there. So mm. close, close one for this Florida Gators team, but at the same time, you have to watch out for this Golden Gopher squad because they're knocking on the door once again. Both teams really good defense on that near post, able to play very aggressively. Strawberry's gonna put a shot on target from the carry from their teammate. But it's gonna be J-Russ here, off to the left. The pass is up, Raids up for a no. But Strawberry to the right. They get one touch, they get by one. Can they show us some magic? Trying to get that one center, Raid was waiting. J-Russ now, in the defense. Out through neutral, Chez and Bismo. Strawberry can't send it home. Only 12 boost for Russ. They're just gonna send it deep into the zone. That's a smart clear, it's a smart play. Give yourself some room, get some boost. Regain, reset, and look to attack. Strawberry now off the right-hand side. Love the extra effort that he's putting into this one. Still kept the car control as he gets bumped off of it right at the last minute. Here comes J-Russ now, knocking down the door once again. Chad's going to cut that one off early, and this is the type of defense we have been seeing so far out of everybody in this tournament. Look at Bismo, though. This one might be trouble. Strawberry's going to put this oh! one through, courtesy of the raid demolition on the goal line. 
I almost thought that was saved. What a close one. Strawberry with the egg. Bismo is almost there. That hitbox is about as long as it can be and just doesn't get the required save. One to two now for the Orange Squad. That is the Florida Gators against the Golden Gophers from, Minis from uh, Minnesota. Let's see if they can get one more goal or will it be Strawberry? Looking to put another one through. First game to go to the Gators. They're looking to go up 2-0. They just got to hang on. I was going to say earlier, though, that this is the type of defense we've been seeing pretty much this whole entire tournament. Just heavy, heavy defense, but, like, at the same time, you see all these angles being cut off early. Some of these opportunities are just few and far between in these windows. Like that one right there from Bismol, that saved away to the left-hand side. It was there in a normal Rocket League game. Those are there, mm -hmm. but these players are playing just so fast. At the same time, they're just so smart as well. Well, they sent the house, and when you send the house, when you pull the goalie, it, it, it's a last-ditch effort to get that tie yeah. in the waning seconds, and they will be punished for it in this instance, although I do want to give credit. Mom did win two solid 50s in the offensive zone to give themselves the opportunity to get that shot and the pass across the front of the goal for Chez, just not quite where it needed to be. Yeah, this team being from Minnesota, you know, pretty much a hockey state, I would say, you know, so no surprise to me that they're kind of pulling their goalie there, which is a good thing in my personal opinion. That's what you have to do, especially being down by one, only a couple of seconds remaining. You can only tie the ball game up and force an overtime, in my personal opinion. You can't lose by more. So right. my personal opinion, smart play by the Golden Gophers, but this one's going to go over to the Florida Gators. And I don't think, I actually don't think that we have enough of a, um, Enough of a discussion when it comes to a lot of the ways that professional teams or your bubble teams or any teams in Rocket League in, in general, talk about that threshold. When you're down a goal and you need yeah. to score, what time do you start to cut rotation? What time do you say, hey, if this person right here, right now, lost the ball over my head, they're going to score and the game's over. Do Is yep. this the time? Am I making the play right now? In this situation, Golden Gophers, I think they picked the right moment. They had it all together, and it just didn't quite come to fruition. Game number three, are we going to see two sweeps in a row, or can we get can we get that 2-1 and get going and extend this series? I mean, I would hope that we could extend this series by a little bit, give us some more mic time, you know what I mean, Bax? Uh -huh, but at the same uh -huh, time, uh -huh. the way that the Florida Gators squad has been playing, uh, they look pretty much, you know, I would say almost a little bit better than the Arizona squad that was just on stream. As far as the offense goes, I really feel like their defense is pretty much on par with Arizona as well. But we just really don't know because Golden Gophers really haven't presented too much to us. So at the time being, I would go ahead and say that the Florida Gators might do this in a sweet fashion. Well, a great save from Chez after a double commit in the defensive side. Bismo gets the corner hitbox, but Jay Russell's waiting. Chez out to the side as well. They're surviving an early onslaught from the Gators. Uh oh, the double, the triple oh. read! Solo effort, left side, puts it through. Early lead for the Gators. What a solo play right there from Raid. Mom just missing contact with that one, but I, I talked about, you know, maybe a little bit too harshly towards Raid, so my apologies to him, but I called it the J Rush and Strawberry Show, so Raid's proving why exactly he should be on this team. That goal sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. 4.15 on the clock. Shot opportunity for Raid again, but no! Now back out to left, J. Russ. No, it's gonna be Mon. Carrying this one through neutral. Looking to send it. Nope, Strawberry over to the right side. We're waiting to see that kind of possession control. I like that play from Chess. They just take their time. They're gonna wait for it. Wait for it to see. You gotta get that car to commit. You gotta get one car to commit. It's a game of trades. Strawberry, whoa! Oh, so close. A demo comes through, the shot is in. Jay Russ off the assist from Strawberry for goal number two. I can't believe we just seen this play take place. Ray just coming through, demoing on the goal line and then the double touch off of the top post, courtesy of Jay Russ, puts the Florida Gators up 2-0. And this is exactly why I said I feel like this is gonna be a sweep. To the right, shot on. Needs to be saved. Mom, on oh. target, saved again. They put it towards the center, and all the cars combined their hitboxes like a big monster of defense for the Florida Gators, indeed. And it wasn't enough, although here, oh, oh Bismo! No. Bismo side flips, and they have stopped <laughs> playing the game. They momentarily stop in horror. 
Yeah, Abysmal definitely wants that one back. You've seen how he just kind of was shocked that it didn't go through. He had that extra flip reset, pretty much, inside the box, and then he accidentally probably hit his A or X button and just uses it right at the worst time possible. That was just a huge missed opportunity. Just sucked the wind right out of everybody. And that right there backs... I, I, I don't know what to say. Florida Gators up by three. Well, Strawberry gets a little bit of fortune here. I mean, they see Mom in front. They're just going to put that through. Strawberry fields forever. Uh, three goals to zero. One goal apiece. It's a team hat trick here from the Gators. Golden Gophers not quite putting together what they need to get past this team. Although, we've seen the little spots of promise from them two and a half minutes. Plenty of time. Plenty of time to mount something. Although, who is it? It's the Florida Gators on the offense yet again. And yeah, just unrelentless pressure. They're up by two, they're up by one. Doesn't matter. They're gonna keep on teeing off towards that net. Whoa. Close one right there from Bismarck as well. And the follow-up touch just blocked away once again from Strawberry. So look at this Florida Gator squad holding fairly well on defense, but Golden Gophers finally score one through. They get it through off of perseverance, off of persistence, letting themselves say, hey, let's put some shots on target. They aren't gonna go in unless they're on target. That's what we have to do. And I think that might be the answer. They gotta get some shots on target to keep them honest, get back to rotation, try to hold them, uh, cement them down on that goal line so they can try to get some kind of offensive set. Cause right now, everything coming up Gators, but they're back on the board. J Russ going for it against Bismo. Oh Bismo with the side flip. Mom's gotta be careful up over the top. An awkward uh, exchange. And it will be Strawberry here underneath. They have the reset as well. Strawberry goes unconscious from the top right side. Four to one. I want to say this is that new mechanic that everybody's been talking about. Strawberry just implementing it right here. Pretty much that unlimited flip reset timer that, you know, everybody has been trying to pretty much master and bring to Rocket League. So Strawberry kind of showing a little bit of the mechanics and the practice being showed as well. Huge, huge individual play right there for Strawberry. Two minutes on the clock, four to one here. Out to the right, looking for one more touch. They get through, Mom to the right. Underneath here, Bismo, and now j Russ Will be Strawberry out to the left. Mom out to the right, gets one touch, back towards center, looking to put that one through. No, Strawberry, the cut underneath. It's actually a pretty good play. Mom is gonna get that one back on target, and Ray does so good to put that ball away from the two incoming cars. Chez will be on defensive duties on the near side rotation. j Russ does well enough. Chez, aggressive play. Strawberry, not a lot of boost. Ray flips into the ball. And this is not how you want to play ball. defense, but doesn't really matter when you're up by three. Yeah, they're having a little bit of fun out here, which is what you like to see and which is what Rocket League ultimately is about. But at the same time, winning is fun. And, you know, there's still plenty of time on the clock right now to kind of score three goals, but quickly ticking away. And mm. as the second tick away, it's kind of diminishing as I'm speaking as well as we cross the final minute. But Rocket League ultimately about fun. Got to have some fun out here, especially when you have a, a lead like this. You want to go for more of those highlight plays like this shot right Ooh. here from Raid, almost finding its way through. So, yeah, Bax, I mean, I, why not? You're up by three. Mm -hmm. Up by three, feeling good. Uh, up by two in this series. Looking to send home here in a double sweep that we've had on stream so far. Strawberry stands strong against two cars and then up off the backboard for the carry to the right side. Strawberry really is everywhere. Chez underneath gets one, gets two. It's a quick reset off the ceiling to get that on target, but it doesn't go anywhere. This is the strength of this Florida Gators team. They haven't allowed anything through. Look at Strawberry, the last second flip. They have boost. They're up the wall. They're looking to get creative. They're looking to tuck this one underneath. They get by one. They get by two. They can't get by mom, though. Mom stands strong on the back line. Chez back towards center. Bismo's up for it, cleared away. And I think our final scoreline very well might be 4-1. We're into extracurriculars, though, and something fun could happen. Chez has given up, though. Florida Gators, ladies and gentlemen, in three. Yeah, you have to think that that shot from Chez, he, he kind of gave that one up and sucked the life out of him in this one. But, yeah, tough break for Golden Gophers pulling this very, very solid Florida Gators squad off the bat. So, unfortunate for them when they're taking on this, you know, just huge team. We talked about Florida Gators and just pretty much the, the, the player pool, what's going to represent and – you know, mm. sorry for, for J. Russ, me not knowing who he was off the bat initially. So my apologies to J. Russ. But at the same time, you know, we, we didn't really have a lot about most of these players out here, Bex. 
uh, it, that this is something where we're discovering this, right? I mean, the collegiate scene, the bubble scene, this is a growing scene. It is a scene that yep. continues to get larger and larger and larger. That means a player base more that we have to know more and more and more. There are yeah, constantly a- new players. There are roster drops, roster changes, picking up players. It is constantly in flux. There is always a new team, another team, a renamed team, a new pickup, people getting into the esports scene. I love it. It's growing. It's alive. Although that does mean the knowledge, the knowledge to like <laughs> that we need to catch up with is a lot of different players. Like that's just, that's yeah. the way that it is. That's the way it's going to be. I mean, I'm here for it, but yeah, you know, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. There's a lot of players. Yeah. Out. Rocket League is a constantly growing sport. I mean, e- even yep. so we stretch over across the pond over to EU, you know, over to look what Sand Rock Gaming is doing as well. You know, you got a lot of teams like Complexity coming over from South America over to NA. So, I mean, it's just constantly, like you said, constantly moving everywhere and every which way. It's almost impossible to keep up with, especially being at a bubble scene and now Kalashnik as well, extending over across the pond, opening up a new, new EU uh, kind of uh, expansion for college esports. So it's going to be awesome to see all these players and then kind of follow their journey now because we're going to have that kind of track record on some people as well. So, yeah, I mean, like I said beforehand, just almost impossible to kind of keep up, keep up with. And I, I don't even think we had anything on Florida Gators even being in this tournament. So we didn't even have a chance to right. kind of look any of the players up in this one. So it's just unfortunate yep. for us. But at the same time, GG's the Florida Gators. You guys are moving yep. on. I mean, it, it just it, what, what's really cool to see, too, is you do see those those all star players. I mean, Strawberry had almost 800 points in a 3v3 lobby. That's impressive. <laughs> that, I mean, that yeah, I like mean, like that's what you might expect a, in a drop shot lobby. You know what I mean? Like, let alone yeah, in a I mean, 3v3 like, soccer lobby. Everybody on the Golden Gopher is rocking that supersonic legend tag, too. So it's even more impressive. That just shows you the caliber player that he is. Sure. And that is and that is very true. Uh, shout out to all the players in the lobby. Uh, great games. And thank you for the series. We'll have another series uh, coming up once we once we know who's in the series and who the players are going to be. Uh, as it stands, collegiate esports definitely on the rise. Uh, definitely a lot of players who are getting involved in that. I kind of wish uh, there had been collegiate esports when I was going to college. Uh, I would yeah. love to go back and find and find a, and be able to join a Counter Strike team or, you know, back in the day, maybe a TF2, Team Fortress 2 team. Um, I am so stoked for the growth of Rocket League and for the uh, for just how, you know, for how big the game's becoming. It's also, I mean, what do we, I, I mean, the game really doesn't have like a ceiling, does it? It could go, it could grow as big as it needs to. I mean, People yeah. Are willing to put time into it. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're looking at pretty much just the birth of Rocket League where it is right now. You're kind of missing high school level even high school teams so true so true investing yes. into making rocket league team, not just rocket league but esports teams in general and then they're recruiting just like real sports i'm sorry guys to tell you guys this this is very a very competitive field and people pay lots of money for coaching uh you know for just right. trying to train their kids up and just put the countless hours into it because beforehand when me and Bax were kind of growing up it was kind of like frowned upon to play video games as much as we did but sure. yeah, I totally wish that we had some sort of collegiate rock or uh, Call of Duty team because like, when I was going to school, you know, I would have totally, you know, tried to do that. But at the same time, at the high school level, I just seen on Twitter today a high school senior tweeting out looking for college opportunities. DM me, uh, pretty much putting their grades out there. I'm not gonna put the kid on blast by any means, but there's a bunch of ton <laughs> ton of programs as well uh, on Twitter that essentially are uh, organizations that try to transition those kids from the high school level and bring them to the collegiate level. Right. And I do think, uh, I, I, I think there is a lot of growth in the support, like you're saying, uh, certainly in, in Western culture as well of like gaming, just as a, just as something, I mean, I think everybody, everybody games, you know, and that's something that's really changed over with phones, especially with smartphones yeah. and stuff. Um, side swipe RLCS win, you know what I mean? Uh, so Mizzou black <laughs> and uh, tech, MTY are going to be the next two teams. Mizzou Black, we were uh, discussing this pre-show, actually, um, when we were looking at the players and some of the rosters. Homeless Baby, KCP Street Team, and Intern, um, a great player, uh, supported by Rapid Sock and Coke Boy 7-Up. Those are who are on the list. We'll see if those are the people who show up in the lobby um, but this is going to be, this is going to be a good match. I'm excited to see who's going to be, uh, who's going to be working through this one against tech MTY ladies and gentlemen, Mizzou black. We're going to be getting to the match here. Uh, they are rostered by blanks. There is Coke boy and homeless baby. The serial spring 2020 elite against tech. That's Darrow gamma and Santino. 
Yeah, I was gonna say homeless baby walking into this lobby, rocking the CRL Spring 2020 Elite, and I do remember that Mizzou team being very, very solid. You know, just from like the little bit of uh, college Rocket League that I do follow. So, I mean, pretty much just like everybody else who pretty much loaded up that stream just to pretty much get their drops and stuff. So I kind of put it on in the background. But I do remember Mizzou having a pretty solid team. And there you go, right there, the homeless baby being on that squad. Back to center. Oh, a miss here from Santino. Darrow, Coke Boy gets a center. Gamma sends it aside to the left. Homeless Baby back to the center. That's good. Oh, Santino actually gets a touch on that into neutral. Back over to the left. It's going to be a mounted offense here from the Orange Squad. They went for the full send. It's a yard sale. One towards demo, one towards shot, and one towards the pass. They don't get punished though. Quick defensive reaction, but not a threatening enough shot from this blue squad. I think they probably could have had a goal at last. We're still nil nil on the pitch in game number one. Yeah, that's Mizzou Black team. As you almost say that, backs the cast of curse comes alive and homeless baby puts this one through first. We talked about him a lot. Is gonna go ahead and put the Mizzou Black squad up one to zero. Uh, there is no greater guarantee of a goal than a mic transition between casters let me tell you what <laughs> it's a curse man we have all the power that's all i have to say about that we need to start that caster blessing we need to get that energy going homeless baby over to the right again no shut down blanks out of position this could be a goal it is the return blanks caught on the creep in neutral one one Danthino just comes up on this one. Like you said, Blanks being the last person back, thought that his team was going to win that 50-50 or essentially win the possession of that ball, but unfortunately does not happen. So it's going to put Mizzou Black in a bad position right there. But at the same time, there's nothing you can really do in that situation if you're Blanks. Back out to left. Darrow, one touch. Nothing really clear in the zone here for this orange squad. They're kind of letting... The offense for Blue generate. Oh, and a save from Santino. But Darrow had to double commit because they didn't know if their team was going to be able to get that save. Little bit of a lack of communication there. Now to the left, trying to cut this one inside. It will be Coke Boy. Open field. Oh, there's the one. There's the defender. Santino. Oh, oh no. and Coke Boy puts it wide. They wanted to cut that to that top corner, didn't they? Yeah, that was just a missed opportunity right there. He, he cut that one too much. The goalie was there in the net trying to prevent that one from happening. It was just a guessing game for the goalie. He just needs to shoot that one on target and kind of make him guess and make him guess wrong. So you definitely think that Mizzou Black kind of wants that one back. Touch here from Santino. Darrow, the double! Oh, right over the top. Had enough boost and just misjudged it. Cowboy to regain. Looks for the pass. And there is the pass. The shot was sent wide by Santino. Gamma out to the left. Pop up over Homeless Baby. One goes right by. Darrow back out to the left now. Looking to put something on target. Blue standing strong. Right now in the offensive set is the orange team. But quickly out into an offensive set here for Blue. The pass play. They're getting they're a little bit bunched up, aren't they, here? When they're uh, clear in the zone here, Blue team needs to spread out maybe a little more and get some pass plays going. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty much all bunched up. Everybody's kind of playing their game, but at the same time, like, it's just few and far between opportunities. There's a couple of things that are kind of mistakes that are kind of kind of presenting themselves on the field, but it's just so short-lived. These, these players on the field are just kind of cutting everything off early. It's just been like the constant Rocket League that we've been seeing, you know, throughout the whole entire tournament. Just shots like that one from Coke Boy, set, like 7-Up, pretty much, and then the, the, the Sage is coming through, and then look at him on the rotation back as well. It's just really, really solid Rocket League being presented right here. Into the defensive corner that will pop up, but Coke Boy does well with it. Homeless Baby on the return, and Santino turns on the ball. Really like how Santino's playing defense so far. Very aggressive on defense. When they see the ball enter the zone, they're trying to make that first touch, make the offense make a decision about what they want to do with the ball so that their defender can read the play Great bump here from behind on Darrow, who was the challenger to the ball from Blanks, who was coming through neutral. Homeless baby, right by the ball. Darrow will not be able to challenge Coke Boy. Coke Boy comes straight down, trying to get Gamma off the wall. They're going for the physical play with 70 seconds to go. Blanks will not have their member. Gamma was bullied and uh, Homeless Baby aside. That was going to be the shooter. Gamma now looks to pass. The pass is through. Santino, one more. Oh, they miss it. So close to a great offensive set. This is so close is right. Just the offense. I mean, just the rotation of the car just being the wrong way. That's how close that shot was. So a little bit of a car control issue right there for Santino, but nothing to be worried about. 
just yet. This one might be trouble here. Blake's gonna put this one a floater right there at mid or right there at the goal line. Daryl's gonna save that way to the right hand side, but right now it's looking like anybody's ball game as we approach the 30 second mark, Bax. Trying to get the next goal could be heroic indeed. Shot start center. Blanks has to do well against Darrow. And it will clear the zone. Gamma against Homeless Baby and Blanks. Over to the right side. They're trying to mount an offense here. Trying to get some kind of pass play set up. That's towards center. Coke Boy could put this one on target. They're going to pass up to Homeless Baby. What a play! In open field. The pass and execution on the break gives the one goal lead. Yeah, getting everybody involved here. Blanks passing this one towards midfield to Coke Boy, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, is Homeless Baby. He was all the way on the orange side of the field, kind of cherry-picking just a tad bit, but at the same time, the over-aggression right there for Mizzou Black works out in their favor. Back to center, 10 seconds. Can the blue squad get another one? Can the orange squad answer? It looks like a shot on target. Bar down and out! Gamma and Darrow and Santino, you have a task ahead of you. One second on the clock. Can you get there? Ball will touch oh. down. Mizzou Black to take game one. Yeah, like I talked about in the pregames, like before this match even started, it's, I said how tough this Mizzou squad was going to be. Yeah, I mean, we can see it on our screen. Uh, Coke Boy likes seven up as a season four dunk master, kind of implementing those dunking, uh, the, the, the mm. dunk master skills over here on the field, taking that MVP spot away from Homeless Baby. So it just goes to show you how tough Coke Boy likes 7-Up is going to be and how tough this Mizzou Black squad is going to be as well. Especially when you look at the offensive numbers. Uh, Coke Boy up on top of the scoreline, but we have Homeless Baby, two goals, two shots. Blanks, five shots. Almost Like, like even yeah. the players, like all the way down the list, you're seeing that offense uh, present itself. Although, Santino, top scorer in the lobby, despite losing that match, almost 500 points, one goal, four saves off a bunch of these shots as well. So, I think Tech is there. I think they have the ability to get some goals. I just don't think they have quite the same presence on the fast break. That's how we saw Mizzou Black take this game. Uh, they're just a little bit faster when it comes to making the decision to get out of the defensive zone. Got to see, I think we got to see Tech step up a little bit, get a little bit faster, be quicker to make decisions, and get that ball on target. Yeah, not only faster, but like you said, just smarter decision-making as well coming from Mizzou Black too. So, I mean, Tech, they have some opportunities, but I really feel like, feel like they're few and far between. And they're more, more individual opportunities where it's like an easy save away from Mizzou Black. They do put a shot towards net. There was a couple of chances, like I said beforehand, like that one shot from Santino that just did not find its mark because he was just one rotation away. Starting this one off right here with Blanks, though, shooting this one towards net. So picking up right where they left off is Mizzou Black. But... I definitely think that Tech has it, but Mizzou Black just looks like such an overall better team. Opportunity there to be maybe a little more aggressive will be denied. Back out to the left. Daryl with the shot opportunity. No, they're actually just going to put this one off to the side. Coke Boy's going to steal boost. Look at this. They go from corner to corner, stealing both boosts before leaving the zone. They're playing the long game. They're playing the outside game of Rocket League. Deny boost, deny resources. It's going to give you an advantage in time. It's going to give you an advantage in possession. It's going to give you shots on target. It's going to give you a goal. 1-0. Picking up right where they left off. Like we said, Mizzou Black, almost baby, just pretty much putting this one towards net. Gamma overextending right outside the orange box. Nothing anybody can do on that tech squad. Nobody back in time to save that one away, but... Yeah, Homeless Baby trying to get that MVP spot right here, starting this one off early. Not even a minute off the clock, Put another shot towards Netta's Blanks, though. So you have to be careful. We talked a lot about, you know, Homeless Baby and Coke Boy likes 7-Up, but at the same time, we're forgetting about the other member, which is Blanks. We said tons of saves, six shots in that first game. Four shots to zero right now between these two teams in the first 60 seconds. Darrow's up, shot opportunity. Got to be uh, put up over the net. Santino down, Gamma's there. What a play. Great pass from the heavens down to earth. We are graced with a goal to equalize. This is beautiful. Getting everybody involved on the offense, kind of pulling that goalie as well to tie this series up. And if that's what it takes to get by this Mizzou Black defense, then that's what you have to do. Get everybody involved, have everybody get a touch, and have the defense guessing. Santino's going wide. That's just an open net, and that's going to be missed. It's missed on yep. both most by our blue player here. They, they are going to – Blank's going to want that one back. They have five shots. They led the shots in the entire lobby in the previous game. No goals. There it Blank is. Yes, let me have it. Whoops, you. They got the second effort. You can't always say you get that in Rocket League. 
Yeah, Blanks, I mean, just keeping the aggression on. He wanted that shot back. He put himself in the position to kind of, he cut that rotation early, put himself in that position to kind of intercept that ball early on. He didn't find himself a goal that first game, so he definitely wanted to hunt one down here. Here comes Blanks right again on the counterattack. He is just everywhere right now on the offense. Finally making some contact. Look at the dunk right here. Oh. Homeless baby as well. That one almost finding the threshold. And Tech need to wake up and get this one off of the orange side of the field or something bad's going to happen. Like that goal right there from Coke Boy. Tech, it, it, this is what you're saying is rings so true. I think a little bit of a misplay here from Darrow. They go up to the wall on the near post. you got to clear the zone. A part of clearing the zone isn't just getting the ball out of the zone to try to score a goal. It's getting the ball out of the zone so that you can reset. This is another shot on goal, and another goal goes through off a kickoff. Not something you see too often. Cope Boy just puts it in for the right side. No, but I mean, I talk about kickoffs quite a bit, especially when I cast other, other things, because stuff like this happens. Kickoffs are so crucial, whether it be 3v3, 1v1, or 2v2s. They're just so crucial. It sets up the offense, and it basically gives positioning over to the, 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 the players or the, the team who essentially win that kickoff. It starts to set up everything and pretty much almost set up the momentum as well. As you see right there, Mizzou Black, just that follow-up touch on the kickoff puts them ahead by three now. Out to the right, Gamma. Shot opportunity, goes right by the ball. Not what you're looking to do here. Homeless baby, now to carry. Gamma turns back on the ball, back down towards there. That's gonna be a shot on target. Oh, off to the right side. Could have been dangerous. Homeless baby though, trying to cut that ang. And it was a tough one to need. Gamma out to the left. Santino's gonna get a touch on this one. They got one, do they have two? No, off the wall, back down to neutral. They do get that touch, but they don't have a supporting member. Darrow so far back, maybe not able to get boost on this. Gamma underneath, pops us up into the air, blanks. Gonna get a play, just to force a decision, just to make something happen here. Gamma's up on the ceiling, the drop down, Darrow's not gonna go up for it until late. And it won't come to fruition. They're getting creative, but right now, I think shots on target gonna be much more viable. Oh boy, up the right-hand side now, trying to extend this lead by one more. It's still two minutes remaining on the field, I mean, on the, on the game clock. Daryl's gonna pop this one back towards the blue side of the field. Blanks easily saves this one away to the right-hand side, but once again, I say easily saves this one away, but Blanks wasn't there, and Blanks didn't attack that one the way that he did. Essentially, that one's a gimme goal right back in Tech's favor, and that one would have been, cut the lead down by two. Here comes Gamma now, pops off to the left-hand side as well. Almost baby intercepts this one. Blanks still alive. He's deadly, but these ones could be a potential double touch. Oh. Just misses it off of the post, but the follow-up shot is there, and Coke Boy is gonna put that one through. A little demoralizing here. Blank's great opportunity, but then Darrow gets a touch and it goes nowhere. Not the clear need to get that one cleared up the zone. It's just a gimme over 5-1. Once again, mentality in the yep. game is important. Tech has to slow down, take some breaths, regain. It's not the end of the world. Maybe it's the end of this game, but that is just two games over to Mizzou Black. Are we looking at another 3-0? Is it just the, the stream of sweeps or can we see this Tech team beat this Mizzou Black team in this game or the next? I mean, I think that right now it's just kind of like some pairing, not issues, I would say, but just the pairing that's going on right now is another one finds its way through from Homeless Baby, sends a lead by five now. But, you know, some of these teams is being experienced. You know, you got the Florida Gators squad who just watched earlier uh, the, the game before this one. Mizzou Black, we have a, a bunch of people in this tournament that play college rocket league or even play semi-professional rocket league in the bubble scene so i mean it's just a couple of college kids that probably got together seen it online on twitter one day you know let's say that's uh tech mty squad and they just you know hey let's try out for it we have a couple of solid people or you know the golden gophers we have some solid people on our squad as well but they um, they got matched unfavorably for the time being six to one right now Darrow underneath, looks to carry, kicking that one through. Santino, now a shot though, it's a laser. And it's right to almost baby. Gamma to follow, shot's on, nice shot there. Top shelf, well done. And what a play it was. My goodness, that, that, is, that is the kind of shot they need. Get that on target, top shelf, send it down the bar. 41 seconds, four goals is a tall order, but that does give momentum into game three. 40 seconds remaining now. Santino, nice job baiting bank blanks out. Has no boost to kind of work with, but mistake right here could be potential trouble. Bringing the one right back towards the orange box. 
Final 30 seconds remaining now. It's been all Mizzou Black so far. Just the dominating performance right now in game number two. Bax, do you think Mizzou Black will take game number three as well? Uh, I, I think right now they are the better team. I think they look like the better team. I think there's hope here for this Tech team. Uh, also, I do want to mention I did uh, give them a, uh, a look real quick, and it is uh, they are another team out of Mexico. So it's cool to see that Mexican representation in the NA scene. See them coming up here trying to put a shot on. Will be or trying to deny the shot rather. Mizzou Black take game number two. They're the better team. Mizzou Black is the better team. Doesn't mean Tech can't take a game off of them. I think they can take a game off of off of them in this uh, in this next set. You got to stop the offensive power and clear the zone. I think that's the focus here. The big focus: clear the zone, push the ball, and just try to create some opportunities. But you can't create opportunities if you're just suffocating. And credit to Mizzou Black for the suffocation. They're stealing the boost and keeping it in the zone. You're talking about the suffocation. Look at the stat line right there. 17. Was that 17 shots? Sorry, I'm bad at math. College kids, help me out. But I believe that's 17 shots. Streamer math, in, man. Streamer math. It's, it's in, a thing. in favor of Mizzou Black right there. That's just insane numbers. The, the relentless pressure, you know, just, just being built up by Tech. And you would have to think that something would have to go through eventually. But just have to, like you said, get this ball off of the orange side as much as possible. Establish their wheels on that midfield mm. line and kind of just keep everything over on the blue side and keep it off their side as much as possible. But at the same time, you have to do something with that ball as well. You have to have those shots go through, get everybody involved, like you've seen uh, that first goal for Tech MTY. Um, and then obviously that second goal as well. I believe that was Gamma that scored that one. So, you know, hats off to this Tech team, but they need to bring their A game here, almost play perfect Rocket League. Looking for the assist, looking for the pass play, and trying to play with good chemistry. It's something we're seeing the Mizzou Black team do. They're looking for those pass plays up to the wall, looking for the fast break, and looking for that outlet getting into goal opportunities. We've seen a couple great pass plays from both teams here. Gamma had a great shot off a great setup. Uh, they just aren't quite clicking on the same on the same wave lake. So let's see if in this one, as we start off, ladies and gentlemen, we're back to the pitch for game three here. The 2-0 lead for Mizzou Black. Links off to the right. Early start into the zone, but Gamma, that is not the clear they were looking for. Darrow, homeless baby, and that is Coke Boy almost getting a goal, but nobody's home here on the turn. Homeless baby just gonna throw that one. There's the block that comes through. Blake's gonna try to get there as well. A little bit of miscommunication on the defensive side and the offensive side. I don't think anybody expected that ball to be uh, floating in open space for so long. No, not at all. Especially the uh, Tech MTY, they just wanted to kind of, like I said, get this clear out of here, relieve some of this pressure. You see Mizzou Black starting to pull out some of the demolitions as well, so still being very aggressive. Good pop outside right here by Santino. It's going to be very, very close, though, as Blinks almost had the dunk there, so I believe that that one was Gamma on the cross, or maybe Daryl. Look at Gamma from coast to coast going to carry this one in. I thought Coke Boy for sure might have had this one, but what happened here, Bax? Well, Gamma actually just carried it to the to the left side of the goal. It's a really smart play. And look at the way that they're actually organizing the hitbox. Coke Boy actually rotating on the right side. There was a demolition that came through. They didn't have enough boost. They were trying to flip forward so they could get all the way to the ball in time. Not much you can do, though. And I think Gamma recognized that power to them. They lead this game right now, 1-0. I said they could take a game off of them. Yeah. And that's exactly how you do it. You got to punish the opportunities given to you. Punishment has been had. But this is exactly what you need to do as well. You need to get off of the orange side of the field, you know, and, and keep that pressure over on the blue side. You see Blanks kind of picks this one up at midfield, but you'd love to see the aggression right now from Tech MTY. Santino off of the ceiling now, has a ceiling shot. It's gonna be saved away, close one right there. Almost maybe gets credit for that one though. Out to the left, Gamma. Underneath, back out to the left. Cleared off the near post. Darrow, aggressive turn, I like it. Homeless baby. To the right, Gamma, another shot opportunity. I like to see Gamma so far. It looks like they have changed up the pace a little bit. They're rotating very quickly on the offensive side. They're on the end of the ball so far in this first two minutes. Darrow's gonna go up for that one, and now Gamma to put it back into the zone just like that. They're keeping it in the offensive rotation. They're giving this Mizzou Black team a taste of their own medicine. Gamma on target, top shelf. Oh, it's off the backboard, and Homeless Baby to clear up their neutral. Will get the demo, but the ball is sent back yet again. This is the difference maker. Look at the time and the breathing that yep. this Tech team has. Yeah, exactly. This is the pressure that we needed them to do uh, against this Mizzou Black squad because they had, like I said, 17 shots. Just 
a ton of pressure on this Tech MTY squad. And the more you keep this on the blue side of the field, the less chance you have to lose this game. Because right now you're up by 1-0. to zero. But I don't think that's going to be enough for them to kind of, you know, take this game number three away from uh, Mizzou Blacks. So they need to kind of keep adding some more goals onto this uh, uh, lead here. And essentially keep this one as much as you possibly can on the blue side. And maybe hope that this one is going to end Whoa. in a 1-0 deficit or one zero in your favor my apologies that was that was about as close as it can get that ball was just yeah. floating there once again the second time in this game where we've kind of had everybody just kind of standing by a little bit of bystander effect like are you gonna go for it do i go for it Who, does somebody want to make a move like just uh, go for it go for the ball um almost ends up being an equalized game almost maybe gonna put that one on target gamma and santino going to a uh, tag team the ball out to the left side and it will get cleared of the zone once again great play here from this deck MTY team. Double demo comes through. Santino gets one touch. Leader on the points board. Ooh, Gamma almost beat. Homeless baby to that ball. But Santino will turn, cut the ball, and Gamma gets the demo on Homeless Baby, but Homeless Baby did get the boost. So a little bit of a trade there. Boost for a player. Shot on. What a wow. save from Gamma. Timing it perfectly. That was such a huge save because Blanks was on the goal line hunting for that demolition from Gamma. And you see that, I think that was a uh, uh, San, sorry, not Santino, but I think that might've been Homeless Baby or a uh, Coke Boy trying to have that follow-up shot right there on the goal line. And pretty much Blanks hunting that last person back. Just very, very heads up play right there from Gamma. Darrow clears the zone. 60 seconds on the clock here, game number three. They're looking to extend this series down 2-0. If Mizzou Black somehow comes back from this one, they will sweep the series. We've had our first two series B sweeps. Gamma one touch, looks for a second. Whoa! They cut underneath that ball and scooped it like a ladle into a bowl of soup. That thing went crazy high. Darrow, nice defense here. Almost maybe on target. Oh! Too accurate, too good. And it's time. I was hoping, 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 hoping that Gamma could stretch this Octane out as far as he possibly can and make contact with that ball. Just anything right there on the goal line, I think would have saved that one away. But unfortunate, but a huge read right there from Azu Black to put that one through late, late in this game. Back out to the front. Gamma almost was able to get there in time. 30 seconds on the clock. Homeless baby puts this one up. That's going to be off the backboard. Blanks does well to get rid of it. Gamma out to the right side. Darrow underneath. That's going to be up over the top. Oh, Gamma has to do well with this. And they are saying it deep into the zone. Double commit here. This could be huge. Darrow has some boost as well. Over to the wall. They're going to try to cut this one over to the inside. One more touch. Yes, yeah, Santino off the ceiling. No, no ceiling touch. Going to be dangerous here for this blue squad. Offense mounting. Darrow, huge win on the 50. We'll set the tone here for the final five seconds. Back out to the right side. Gamma gets it by. Homeless baby looks to kill. It's still up. Over to the left. No. Touchdown. OT for the life of Tech MTY in this series. Well, Tech MTY did come in here. They're playing some A-plus Rocket League right now. Mizzou Black definitely struggling as well uh, as far as like trying to find the back of the net because Tech MTY have woken up and is playing phenomenal offense now, keeping everything over on the blue side of the field. But I want to see them walk away with this victory here. But late towards the end of that game, it looks like they were having a little Ooh. bit of accuracy issues. You see Santino try to put that one through as well. But Bax, this is still anybody's ballgame, in my opinion. Orange team is mounting some offense here. Getting creative. Santino is going to go ahead and half flip to get back onto that ball. I almost thought it was a feels backflip moment, but it's actually very calculated indeed. Back to center. Coke boy, homeless baby already on the wall, misses the touch. Not something we're gonna say all that often, but Coke boy, the slow play gets by one. Darrow back on target, the pass play now. Sent aside, a little bit tentative from both teams here. Not really getting as aggressive as they need to to get a shot on target. Opportunity here, Santino gets one, doesn't have any more boost. Gamma's gonna be going for the buff, they're going for the buff play underneath. Nice save from Coke boy to get a touch on that ball. Back door center, Gamma, no, save by Blanks. Again, the ball is centered. One more time for another shot. No, homeless baby, no boost. Darrow puts it back through, up the wall. The orange team has all the power, all the offense. Can they get it in the back of the net? Ow! Santino! Extend the series! I cannot believe Game what four. I just witnessed right there back. Santino coming through in the clutch. Keeping the hope and dream alive right here for Tech MTY. So hats off to Tech MTY fighting back and staying alive in this tournament. Jeez, that's what they need to do. That aggression 
was something that we haven't seen from them. I think the entire I think, I think back to <laughs> is having it, some mic issues right now, ladies and gentlemen. I think his microphone might have left the building real quick. So give us a minute as we situate this one. Um, but yeah, Tech MTY right now coming through down still by one more game, pretty much forcing this game number four, though. So good job to Tech MTY to kind of take this one away from Mizzou Black. But that pressure is what kind of kept them in this one. Pretty much all the offense as well, keeping it on the blue side of the field. And backs, I, I like what I see from Tech MTY. They're going to get it done right here in game number four. Uh, testing, how's the mic? Am I back? Still feels like I think Bax is having a little bit of microphone issues, ladies and gentlemen. So, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and hop on the mic solo for just a tad bit. As you see right here, Daryl is going to score this one and put, I believe it was Tech MTY up 1-0. to zero. Actually, I think the... Uh, might be having some internet issues myself. I'm not too sure what is exactly going on, but Daryl did score that one for Tech MTY. They up are up one to zero against this tough, me? tough and black here? squad. Yes, Bax, you Excellent. are alive. You are here. Whee! Well, uh, <laughs> what, what's what, what's most interesting about this is I, I think like that last set that we saw from uh, from this Tech team, they're starting to get into these offensive sets where they're actually putting pressure on the ball and they're keeping yeah. the pressure up. They're rotating that defender. They are rotating the defender all the way back to the goal like that. Look at that. That is the offensive set. Santino from the right side gets the feed and the pass. That is Darrow with a goal and an assist. That's Santino with a goal and an assist. They are popping 30 seconds. Mizzou Black is caught off guard. Yeah, Tech MTY definitely looking like the more solid squad than the first two games that we've seen them in. Especially that game number two where I believe it was like a 6-1 to one score line, losing by five goals in game number two. So they definitely did wake up and they're starting to keep this pressure over on the Mizzou black side. Look at another shots they go through. That's going to be Daryl's second one. Tech MTY extended the lead three to zero. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Darrow's just kind of like putting this one on target in case there's a miss from Homeless Baby. Homeless Baby missed. And the yeah. rest is history. So 3-0, 4-14 from the first game. We would not expect to say, hey, in game number four, because Tech's going to not only win a game, they're going to go up 3-0. Uh, definitely a turning point. The pendulum has swung heavily in their favor. For sure. Looking like a, a much, much more solid team. And I think they actually listened to my advice, backs. I think they, uh, you know, they're starting, hey. to establish that, they're starting to establish that, you know, midfield presence, you know, cutting everything off like this one right here from Daryl's and keep this one over on the blue side of the field. And that's exactly what they need to do. You know, to take possession away and get time off the clock as well from this Mizzou Black squad. So doing a very, very good job. So far, it's been all Tech MTY. It looks like they're going to tie this series up, but still plenty of time on the clock left. Demo comes through. And another shot comes through. And another goal comes through. Once again, uh, microphone transition proving very, very uh, fortuitous. Insane when a goal is going to be scored. Uh, Got to give credit. That is going to be two for Santino, two for Darrow. And Gamma's like, hey, can I get in on this right now? Because the floodgates are open. Uh, zero stats for any player of Mizzou Black. No shots. Wow. No wow. saves. Absolutely nothing. Nobody over 50 points. Yeah, I was going to say that. Nobody nobody even over 30 points. You got Homeless Baby with 30. Uh, now Co Coke Boy uh, shoots up from 24 points to 46. And now Homeless Baby's going to tack on add one for himself and shoot right up to 162 so i mean yeah impressive start for this tech mty squad uh daryl uh, just it's a misplay on the defensive side that was a savable ball daryl was on the line they go to the left to go up the wall to try to play a heavier defense thinking that homeless baby was actually going to go for a double go towards that backboard not the case left it wide open uh but you got to give credit almost a doomsy there to get that into the into the side of the net Three minutes on the clock, ladies and gentlemen, in game number four of this best of five series. And we thank you for joining us. Having a good time casting in the booth with my buddy, whoops, you, uh, Musa, behind the scenes on the production for y'all, bringing you all the cool overlays, graphics, and presentation that you've been seeing. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Saturday. And uh, with uh, about halftime here in game number four, we, are, we might be looking at a game five. Although, if you get complacent, whoops, you, you might be in trouble. Yeah, I'm just not sure what happened to the defense here from Tech MTY. I'm not sure if there's a couple of demolitions that kind of came through, but Santino and Darrow were both on the left side of this goal line right here for Tech MTY. 
which left the last member back. Uh, I believe that was Santino or maybe uh, Gamma. My apologies, Gamma, back in the net by themselves. And, you know, pretty much that's just a guessing game, just like a penalty kick in soccer. I think Santino's found a little bit of the rhythm here in this series. Every time they're carrying the ball, they're keeping really good control, but they're also staying really close to the ball as far as their hitbox and car placement. They say, I kind of know how you guys are attacking the ball. I know what I have to be doing on the offensive side. The bump comes through. It's another goal. Three unanswered for Mizzou Black. And let's not get ahead of ourselves. It was four to zero. And now yeah. it's four to three. Yeah, that's just an awesome individual play right there from Homeless Baby. He shoots this one off the back wall to set up this shot right here for his team to kind of force that one through. But more importantly, he gets the bump on the goalie, the only person back right now for Tech MTY. Santino might have a double touch. He does. Santino throws this one through, extends the lead by two. I said they were feeling it. I said they were starting to come into their own. Look at the switch of rotation. They're rotating to the left. They switch the air roll to the right. Some professional players only air roll one way. Like this is somebody who is dexterous in their ability to air roll in both directions. They know when to make that switch. It's a great mechanical play, executed well. Two minutes on the clock, ladies and gentlemen, and they're back up by two. Back up by two, but for how long is the question? Because there's still plenty of time left on the clock for this Mizzou Black team to kind of come back in this one. And we know they're capable of scoring a lot of goals. Talking about game number two earlier, the six to one victory. This one's off the back wall. Santino close with this one to extend the lead. Here comes the follow-up touch by Gamma, just a little bit offside to the left of the post. Unfortunate missed opportunity. I think two back-to-back -back missed opportunities right there for Tech MTY. Santino, light little touch here. And somehow Coke Boy on the power slide will go backwards, leave that for Homeless Baby. Good challenge here from Gamma. Into neutral we go, Blanks demoed and removed from the field. Coke Boy gets one, doesn't get two. Darrow to control over to the left. Are they going to cut the ball? No, they're going to play that 50. That's a well-played 50 indeed to keep it in the zone. Gamma going to play this one backwards. Almost maybe can't get there, but that mid-boost is available. Santino going to go right by it. Shots on. Oh, the first wow. play comes through on the back post 6-3. I think the biggest thing here was just the boost starving play right there from Darrow. And then the huge bump as well, bumping out that last person out the box of Mizzou Black. And then I put Homeless Baby in such a predicament. He had no boost trying to rotate back through, but that shot just opened wide up. Opportunity there for Blinks to cut the ball, but couldn't get to it fast enough here. Three goal lead. This has been a roller coaster of a game. Coke Boy, 20 boost, 10, 9, and 0. Blinks, shot opportunity. We started this game 4 0 in favor of Tech MTY. We then moved into a 4-3 set with three unanswered. And now we're back to 6-3, regain a three-goal lead. What a oh, save what a from save. Santino, floating in front to deny the goal. That would have made it 6-4. They're still looking good, and it's looking like game five. That pre-jump read was absolutely insane, and then Santino's going to do it once again and extend this lead by four now, up 7-3, just under 30 seconds to go. Santino just using everything in that gas tank to catch up to that one to put it through like a full shot, Max. Love that little play there. Just getting that little last burst of speed as they're slamming down that jump. All four tires moving forward gives you that little boost onto the ground if you're low in the tank. And good control as well. Shot on. Nice save from Santino. Ow, oh, almost got a second one. But Coke Boy puts it through. I think, uh, I think we just kind of said, hey, let's all just take some shots and have a good time in this game because we have 11 goals. I think we have more goals in this game than we've had the whole series combined. I mean, they are in college backs. So they're used to taking a lot of shots. I mean, I'm just saying, but that's just me. <laughs> no, what, what happened? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you have to leave, now's the time. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but seriously, what happened? Blanks is just so good on kickoffs. You see it time and time again. Every single time he has that follow-up touch, he is there making his presence felt, and that's why he has so many shots kind of be threatening and that's what backs up this defense for tech mty or just anybody that they're facing but tech mty is gonna go ahead and advance or not advance my apologies tie this series up two to two now and force this game number five uh game number five so game game one and two mizzou black definitely showing up uh game three and four tech mty snakes out game three game four looks to just kind of let the you know broke through the dam oh my uh, gosh what do you think is going to happen here in game number five back santino almost putting up a thousand points in this Woo! lobby right here that is absolutely insane four goals two assists two saves and five shots 
absolutely crazy. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I really feel like it's anybody's ball game. I really do feel like Tech MTY does have slight momentum. They did figure out what Mizzou Black is kind of doing here. Um, so, I mean, if they play to the best of their abilities like they have been playing the last two games, I think it's going to be heavily in favor of Tech MTY. Mm. That, of course, is going to be on mizzou black they need to wake up and need to start establishing and figuring out what the heck is going on for tech mty and kind of start adjusting their game plan a little bit almost feels a little bit like march madness in the regards in that previous game i mean an overwhelming win for tech mty but three goals in 30 seconds came through for the mizzou black team if tech mty isn't careful even though they have the advantage in momentum these goals could be uh could be in the back of the net pretty quickly Right now, we're going to start off in a bit of a, a bit of a chill atmosphere compared to the previous game. We have 0-0, 20 seconds in. Weird to say that that's important, but in the last game, I think we almost already had a 2-0 at this point. Santino yeah. will get one touch in center, 30 seconds down, and we are just feeling our way out through game number five. It's a best of one at this point between these two teams, and who's going to move on? Look at Blanks once again establishing pressure and at the same time just pretty much trying to put this one in the best position possible for his teams to score just like that one from coke boy but blanks just time and time again just bringing this one upfield by himself putting his team in the best scoring position and that's just a beauty touch right there what placement just yeah. just tucks it into bed on the far post we will go into diagonals here blanks and santino darrow's up shots on oh, oh what a save from homeless baby reaction time gamma tried to cut that one underneath to get that pass down to an attacking teammate, the cut here from Blanks, no. Coke Boy already has a goal, walks number two, the 50. Will go in their favor, Homeless Baby up for be able to steal that corner boost as well, yes. Blanks to the left, nice play here from Gamma, gets the touch, Blanks, passing play, no, not quite the touch they were looking for, they want that to go a little bit farther. Get over to their teammate, good pass here, but Blanks is ready for it. Miscommunication on the defensive end, shots on it, far side, you mentioned Blanks, and now they got a goal. He's just been everywhere since I pretty much brought him up. You know, I pretty much pointed him out. Just the individual play right here from Blanks. Awesome to see just keeping this pressure on this Tech MTY squad. And this is the Mizzou Black team that needed to present themselves early on. Tech MTY need to desperately keep this one over to the blue side of the field once again and establish that dominance that they pretty much had this whole entire two games. And as I say that, Santino's going to cross and get the assist from Gamma as well. Gamma, Gamma, I think, had this shot. They were looking to get, it was going to be a softer shot than Santino. Santino says, yeah. nah, bro, this, this, this is going to be me. This is going to be me. I'm going to come here. We got to put a little bit of pace on this because they're going to save it otherwise. Two to one, yeah. your score. I mean, and that's a great answer after dropping two goals. Santino is a shooting machine in this lobby right now. He had almost a 1,000 points the last matchup. Absolutely crazy to see. Like we talked about Bax, just, Rocket League and the ceiling of Rocket League. The competitive scene is just absolutely insane. Santino, pretty much a known name to me. I'm not too sure where he actually came from, but definitely on my radar now. Darrow on the 50. Shot not going to quite be on, but it's a great deflection here. Good read on the hitbox. The pass over to Blanks isn't quite going to be on target. Homeless baby wanted to probably put a little less power on that one. Darrow to control. Out of the left and into neutral we go. Looking for a team to take possession and get a scoring opportunity. Blanks gets cut oh. from Gamma. Gamma going for the 50. It's back towards center. Santino, the touch underneath. That's on target. I think they, I think they put a magnet in the goal. They are feeling it. They are in true form here. Down a goal. We're gonna need to see some magic from this Tech MTY team. And Santino is holding the wand. Minutes and 30 seconds left, quickly approaching halfway point in this matchup. This is game number five, ladies and gentlemen, between these two tough, tough competitors. The best game we probably had on stream all day. The other one's being 3-0 fashion, so this is the only one to make the game number five. And I'll tell you what, if you're not on the edge of your seat, so every single time this ball goes up on the, in the air, I don't know what to tell you. Two minutes and pretty much five seconds down the field. Here comes Gamma off the back wall. Blinks and save the way to the right-hand side. Santino still staying with this one. 50-50 with Homeless Baby. Can somebody follow up touch that one? No, it's cut off by Coke Boy. But it's quickly Darrow. It's going to go ahead and gather that one right back. And this is exactly what Tech MTY needs to do. They need to keep this ball over here on the field, the relentless pressure, and start stealing some of those boost backs. Homeless Baby into Darrow, who gets the read. 
great reaction time. All six cars, I gotta say, playing great Rocket League here. And it's gonna come yep. down to execution, gonna come down to communication. It's gonna come down to that one slip up in rotation. It's gonna, oh, that no. one spot. 90 seconds, but the goal lead right now in favor of Mizzou Black over to Santino. Santino, the 50, tried to go underneath for the reset as well. Give themselves as many tools as possible in that utility belt. Good challenge here from Gamma on the turn. Darrow's up for it. They're not going to be able to be homeless, baby, though. Santino with the clear. It's a huge clear as well. All the way out of the zone. Is there a follow-up? No. Gamma has to wait for this one. Coke Boy back to center. Darrow underneath the backboard. That was dangerous. Santino gets by one. Gamma trying to get that pass back of that play. 60 seconds to go. Is there an answer here from Tech MTY? You'd have to think that there is. You know, the offense has just been on fire lately on a tear as well. I haven't really called Daryl's name too much either, but at the same time, he got himself a couple of crucial goals in the previous games, uh, a couple of uh, goals inside of those, those matches that they lost as well. So, I mean, you have to think that he has something left inside the offense as well, but it's going to be short-lived as we approach the 30-second mark. Here comes Santino being a little aggressive here on his teammate. Daryl, this was off the side wall. Can somebody oh. have the follow-up touch? No, it's going to be popped away to the left-hand side. Final 20 seconds now back. So here comes Darrow. It's going to be popped up 50-50 in the air. Waterfall down. Coke Boy pops it off to the right-hand side, trying to stall just enough time. It might be enough there. Daryl clears this one away. 10 seconds, Max. Homeless baby. Opportunity. Gamma back. Going to drop that one down? No. Santino gets a touch. They're playing very defensive. They're going to chill on this one. Darrow, that's up. That might actually be in. It's going to touch down. Oh, Mizzou Black from the bottom to the top. They win two, and then they lose two. Bringing it back two to one. What a game. What a series we had. And Mizzou Black will snake through nine shots in that game. That might be more shots than they had in the, in the previous two games that they lost combined. Definitely yeah. turn up the Jets. Yeah, unfortunate. Un unfortunate right there for Tech MTY. You know, just losing the way that they just lost that one goal, but just close opportunities right there presented for themselves. But hats off to Mizzou Black for holding their own to take that game number five, you know, in fashion, essentially, keeping us all on the edge of, their, edge of our seats there. But, you know, Mizzou Black, they just look so strong coming out into this matchup. I'm just so, so uh, uh, kind of dumbfounded, essentially, as to how they fizzled out so fast in this matchup and allowed Tech MTY to even come back, right. you know, because we hyped them up so, so much. You know, we talked about Homeless Baby, the CRL Sp uh, spring 2020 elite tag that he's wearing which means he's you know part of that college rocket league scene and then we mm -hmm. also have coke boy who's a season four dunk master he's rocking that tag as well so he has the mechanics as you know to kind of present himself on the field it's just really really surprising to me uh how tech mty kind of came through here uh it it's it's cool to see a team come back from a 2-0 deficit especially because we had so many sweeps on this stream today um, to see them bring it back two games, but also in style. I mean, obviously we have to shout out Santino. Like they were just absolutely insane when it came to execution. They were insane when it came to the offensive pressure. I'm definitely going to keep my eye on that. You said, I mean, one of the one of the cool things about casting and being a part of productions like this is you get a you get a open you get to see some new players. You get to see some yeah. some teams and some people, and it's like okay, I'm going to follow. I'm going to keep my eyes on you because if I if I see you and higher levels of competition as you continue to grow as a player and get better. Uh, I'm not going to be surprised. I definitely want to see, you know, where the, where these players go, where they grow from Uh good effort from tech MTY. That was the second Mexican team that we actually saw um, on stream today. And that will give you uh, your semifinals. So we are going to see. So today, you know, we had, Three of those matches that you see um, on screen, uh, Arizona, UANL, uh, Tigris, that we had that 3-0. Uh, we had the Golden Gophers, Florida Gators 3-0, and then the Mizzou Tech MTY. Uh, some spicy uh, semifinal matchups here, whoopsie. Uh, I believe that the Arizona Tech MTY one might be a little bit missed. Uh, I think that's Mizzou is supposed to be in place of that one, so for tomorrow... Uh, oh, just right, a right. note mm -hmm. for the people in the chat, it's going to be Arizona versus uh, Mizzou instead of Tech MTY in that yellow right there in the upper bracket. So, yeah, I mean, 
it's going to be a great game right there for Arizona versus Mizzou. I, I think that Mizzou mm-hmm. is essentially going yeah. to, you know, have to bring their A game because that Arizona squad just looked very, very good. You have to talk about their defense that was presented essentially on the field, you know, just very, very good defense. And then they followed up with that with some solid offense as well. So, I mean, it's going to be a solid matchup right there in the upper bracket. And then moving on to, down to the lower bracket backs, uh, I'm not too sure who's going to win that one against uh, Florida Gators. That's a very solid squad, too. You, you know, you have the semi-pro player, the bubble scene player, Jay Russ, on that squad, representing Manzana, or he plays for Manzana. Strawberry right. as well for that Florida Gator squad. Remember how cracked he was, too? So yeah. it's going to be a tough match, though. Uh, I mean, it's the the final four here are pretty pretty lit. Like we have a lot of cracked players. We have a lot of great uh, players. And what I really enjoy seeing is, we, you know, we see you always have the person who's going to going to break out. Not not talking about the car, but going to break out of the you know of the team and say, I'm going to take a lead of this game. There's always that one person that kind of seems to take charge. Um, but the more and more we're looking at these team chemistries, the more and more we've been seeing these teams, we've been seeing that they work really well together where they work really well for um for the pass plays even with that person you know coming up to the top i don't i don't even know who to predict is going to take those because those are actually some really even series i mean we did yeah. see both we saw both teams uh in the top semifinal, and i couldn't pick either one at this point i think it's going to go the distance regardless yeah i mean i i think it's going to go the distance 100 percent, but at the same time i really feel like it's there was just unfavorable matchups. I said that beforehand. You know, a couple of people uh, like the Golden Gophers being faced up against Florida Gators. If it yep. was the Golden Gophers versus Tech MTY, we might have seen Tech MTY kind of maybe sneak their way kind of through there. I'm not mm-hmm. trying to say there's anything wrong with their bracket by any means, but I'm just saying like that's how it right. falls sometimes. And you have to battle some of those tough, tough teams. And Definitely. it's just unfortunate that it got kind of matched up that way that that it did. But you know, Tigres maybe even taking on M- uh, Tech MTY, I w- I w- or maybe Tigres maybe even taking on uh, 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 Golden Gophers. Who wins in that matchup? We don't know. Right, but exactly. we're not gonna we're not gonna know because you know both of the teams are actually eliminated in the matchup. So, but yeah, good to see Mexico kind of being represented by two teams. Like you said that earlier, when we think NA, we think more Canada, we think more USA. We don't really get to see a lot of Mexican teams kind of you know put their foot down and start to represent. But I love to see the the, the direction that Rocket League is going. Start to you know be worldwide. You see Oceania, you see South America, you, you know, Asia. Uh, you know, Asia South, Asia North, and you know, of course, Europe and NA. So it's awesome to see how Rocket League has grown, grown over the, just a year, Max. Uh, and it's and, and huge shout out to like the Middle East. The the Middle East oh, yeah. and Rocket yeah. League scene is popping right now. It's crazy. Some of the most cracked players are coming out of that region. And I mean, RLCS Rock Gaming for sure. Right, like RLCS Gaming is blowing wide open. So you know, keep your eyes on everything. Uh, that's gonna do it for us. We actually are. Uh, we're gonna be that. That's it. You guys saw we were in the quarterfinals today, and then tomorrow. 5 30 uh p.m eastern is going to be the semis and the finals uh with a couple you're gonna have uh musa on the production trippin and visionary one gonna be casting for that one a couple of buddies they're gonna put on a good show for you guys so uh whoops you an absolute pleasure to cast with you again dude as always yeah as always bax i mean bax is the guy he's the man i love casting with him any chance i possibly can musa awesome with the production as well on the back end doing things on the fly guys so if there was a couple of errors i know you guys a couple of you guys in chat we've seen you guys pointing out and stuff thank you guys very much for helping us you know he's a one-man show back there trying to do the best that he possibly can so shout and out to musa it. once again slaying it mm-hmm. yeah slaying it for sure if you guys want to find me reach me you guys can go ahead and follow that right down there the uh you know Whoops you gaming on Twitter. If you guys want to follow me Bax, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me at whoops, you gaming at whoops, you gaming. That's where you're going to want to go to find Bax. That's at whoops, you gaming. Um, hey, it's, thank a nice you once- background. it's a nice background there, Bax. <laughs> yeah, no, isn't it good? Yeah, no, it's my, I actually, dude, I used to play, I was 73. Uh, and also there's, there's light, like, dude, I just, I really enjoy football and it's totally my own room uh ladies and gentlemen <laughs> thank you so much for being here it's a bit of pleasure and we will see you tomorrow for the uh for the finals of this thing on behalf of the production crew and my co-caster we'll see you next time cheers peace be well stay safe see you again 